Section Zero of Rainbow Gold Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale, recorded for LibriVox.org by Betty B. Prefatory Note Every anthologist must adopt some plan for making selections. Mine has been very simple. I have made a small collection of poems that would have pleased the child I used to be and the boy who was my playmate above all things i have striven to keep the books small for the big books of poetry on our shelves were always left to themselves it was the little books that became our intimate companions to make a selection for boys and girls from the countless riches of lyric poetry in our language and to reduce that selection to the contents of so small a book as this one is a grave task it involves the exclusion on the grounds of mere lack of space of so much that one loves i should have liked to make a book of this size containing only elizabethan songs and early english ballads another entirely devoted to georgian and victorian poets a third to living writers and a fourth to child rhymes parodies nonsense verses and the like if the grown-up reader regrets omissions i beg him to be sympathetic toward the compiler who has been a prey to those same regrets constantly during the year in which she has been at work on the book alas that a volume cannot have the advantages of being both a big book and a little one at the same time in selecting the poems for the girl and boy who used to be i have tried always to read with their eyes i have been guided from first to last by their enjoyment or their boredom the poems that they loved best had highly accented rhythms and took them into a land of clear colors and stories they enjoyed certain sad poems as much as merry ones but meditative moralistic and gloomy poems were never read but once if they were read at all and i am glad to say that poems full of sentimentality fared no better i have brought together much that has been written since they were children and boys and girls of to-day will find among these poems many of the most enjoyable things in the book to mention only one recent poet that they would have loved walter de la mare is to realize how much a child has missed who does not possess his inimitable peacock pie a child's enjoyment as i said above is what i have striven for in this collection we who have seen how poetry has come to our rescue with its delight its healing and its new courage in times of stress and sorrow know that it is an inestimable possession we cannot come to the knowledge of it too early if we can have a clear personal realization while we are children that we love poetry no amount of well-meaning but sometimes tactless and uninspired teaching of it in schools and colleges can shake us in the knowledge of that love i remember that the first poem i was condemned to learn by heart in school was the builders by longfellow i say condemned but it was not as a punishment every child in the class had to learn it it is one of the poems that i am sure the poet himself would never have given to a child to learn beginning as grown-up readers will remember all are architects of fate working in these walls of time after committing the nine stanzas of this poem to memory it took me a long time to grow willing to read the stirring things that the same poet has written poems as interesting as this one is humdrum but education is better managed now than then teachers and parents alike have come to feel that the love of poetry in general is more to be desired for children than the knowledge of certain well-known poems no matter how good or even how great these poems may be besides a more tactfully managed education in the schools there are children's rooms in the public libraries i have wished many times during the months spent in making this book when visits to these rooms were an inspiration that i might have browsed among the low shelves long ago in childhood and talked with the same delightful librarians i should like to express my thanks to these librarians who have been so kind in various ways i want especially to thank annie carroll moore supervisor of work with children in the new york public library 
who knows the heart of a child from long travelling on the roads to childhood in closing i shall quote briefly from the introduction by andrew lang to his anthology for children the blue poetry book for he speaks my own thoughts better than i can express them it does not appear to the editor that poems about children or especially intended for children are those which a child likes best a child's imaginative life is spent in the unknown future and in the romantic past the poems written for and about children rather appeal to the old whose own childhood is now to them a distant fairy world as the man's life is to the child we make a mistake when we write down to children still more do we err when we tell a child not to read this or that because he cannot understand it he understands far more than we give him credit for but nothing that can harm him the half understanding of it too the sense of a margin beyond as in a wood full of unknown glades and birds and flowers unfamiliar is a great part of a child's pleasure in reading the child does not want everything to be explained in the unexplained is great pleasure a number of my friends have been kind in giving me the names of poems that they liked best when they were children the small compass of the book has made it impossible to use all of the poems suggested in this way but it has been a pleasure to include as many of them as i could i want to acknowledge very gratefully my indebtedness for counsel and suggestions to john gould fletcher vachel lindsay amy lowell jesse b rittenhouse lewis untermeyer jean untermeyer john hall wheelock and marguerite wilkinson sarah teasdale new york city 1922 end of section zero this recording is in the public domain section one of rainbow gold poems old and new selected by sarah teasdale recorded for LibriVox.org by larry wilson kubla khan a vision in a dream by samuel taylor coleridge in xanadu did kubla khan a stately pleasure dome decree where alf the sacred river ran through caverns measureless to man down to a sunless sea so twice five miles of fertile ground with walls and towers were girdled round and there were gardens bright with sinuous rills where blossomed many an incense bearing tree and here were forests ancient as the hills enfolding sunny spots of greenery but oh that deep romantic chasm which slanted down the green hill athwart a cedarn cover a savage place as holy and enchanted as e'er beneath a waning moon was haunted by woman wailing for her demon lover and from this chasm with ceaseless turmoil seething as if this earth in fast thick pants were breathing a mighty fountain momently was forced amid whose swift half intermitted burst huge fragments vaulted like rebounding hail or chafty grain beneath the thresher's flail and mid these dancing rocks at once and ever it flung up momently the sacred river five miles meandering with a mazy motion through wood and dale and sacred river ran then reached the caverns measureless to man and sank in tumult to a lifeless ocean and mid this tumult kubla heard from far ancestral voices prophesying war the shadow of the dome of pleasure floated midway on the waves where was heard the mingled measure from the fountain and the caves it was a miracle of rare device a sunny pleasure dome with caves of ice a damsel with a dulcimer in a vision once saw it was an abyssinian maid and on her dulcimer she played singing of mount abora could i revive within me her symphony and song to such a deep delight twould win me that with music loud and long i would build that dome in air that sunny dome those caves of ice and all who heard should see them there 
and all should cry, Beware, beware, his flashing eyes, his floating hair. Weave a circle round him thrice, and close your eyes with holy dread, for he on honey dew hath fed, and drunk the milk of paradise. End of section one. This recording is in the public domain. Section two of Rainbow Gold. Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. Meg Merrilies by John Keats. Old Meg, she was a gypsy, and lived upon the moors. Her bed, it was the brown heath turf, and her house was out of doors. Her apples were swart blackberries, her currants pods o' broom. Her wine was dew of the wild white rose, her book a churchyard tomb. Her brothers were the craggy hills, her sisters larchen trees. Alone with her great family she lived as she did please. No breakfast had she many a morn, no dinner many a noon. And stead of supper she would stare full hard against the moon. But every morn of woodbine fresh she made her garlanding and every night the dark glen yew she wove and she would sing and with her fingers old and brown she plaited mats o' rushes and gave them to the cottagers she met among the bushes old meg was brave as margaret queen and tall as amazon and old red blanket cloak she wore a chip hat had she on god rest her aged bones somewhere she died full long agone. John Keats. End of section two. This recording is in the public domain. Section three of Rainbow Gold. Poems old and new, selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Avocado. Berries by William Delamere. There was an old woman went blackberry picking along the hedges from weep to wicking. Half a pottle no more she had got when out steps a fairy from her green grot and says, Well, Jill, would he picky mo? And Jill, she curtsies and looks just so. Be off, says the fairy, as quick as you can, over the meadows to the little green lane that dips to the hayfields of Farmer Grimes. I've buried those hedges a score of times. Bushel on bushel, I'll promise ye, Jill, this side of supper, if ye pick with a will. She glints very bright and speaks her fair. Then lo and behold, she has faded in air. Be sure, old goody, she trots betimes over the meadows to Farmer Grimes. And never was queen with jewelry rich as those same hedges from twig to ditch. Like Dutchman's coffers, fruit, thorn, and flower, they shone like William and Mary's bower. And be sure old Goody went back to weep, so tired with her basket she scarce could creep. When she comes in the dusk to her cottage door, there's Towser wagging as never before, to see his missus so glad to be, come from her fruit picking back to he. And soon as next morning, dawn was gray, the pot on the hob was simmering away, and all in a stew and a hugger-mugger, Towser and Jill, a boiling of sugar, and the dark clear fruit that from fairy came for syrup and jelly and blackberry jam. Twelve jolly gallipots Jill put by, and one little teeny one, one inch high, and that she's hidden a good thumb deep, halfway over from wicking to weep. End of section three. This recording is in the public domain. Section four of Rainbow Gold Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Alethea. Romance by Robert Louis Stevenson. 
I will make you brooches and toys for your delight, of bird song at morning and starshine at night. I will make a palace fit for you and me, of green days and forests and blue days at sea. I will make my kitchen, and you shall keep your room, where white flows the river and bright blows the broom. And you shall wash your linen and keep your body white, and rain fall at morning and dew fall at night. And this shall be for music when no one else is near, the fine song for singing, the rare song to hear, that only I remember that only you admire of the broad road that stretches and the roadside fire. End of section 4. This recording is in the public domain. Section 5 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. Hymn of Pan by Percy Bysh Shelley. From the forests and highlands we come, we come. From the river girt islands where loud waves are dumb, listening to my sweet pipings. The wind in the reeds and the rushes, the bees on the bells of a thyme. The birds on the myrtle bushes, the cicale above in the lime, and the lizards below in the grass were as silent as ever old Timolus was, listening to my sweet pipings. Liquid Peneus was flowing, and all dark Tempe lay in Pelion's shadow outgrowing the light of the dying day. Speeded by my sweet pipings, the Sileni, the Sylvans, and Fauns, and the nymphs of the woods and waves, to the edge of the moist river lawns, and the brink of the dewy caves, and all that did then attend and follow, were silent with love, as you now, Apollo, with envy of my sweet pipings. I sang of the dancing stars, I sang of the daedal earth, and of heaven, and the giant wars, and love, and death, and birth. And then I changed my pipings, singing how down the vale of Maenalus I pursued a maiden, and clasped a reed. Gods and men, we are all deluded thus, it breaks in our bosom, and then we bleed. All wept, as I think both ye now would, if envy or age had not frozen your blood, at the sorrow of my sweet pipings. Percy Bysshe Shelley End of section 5 This recording is in the public domain. Section 6 of Rainbow Gold Poems Old and New Selected by Sarah Teasdale Recorded for LibriVox.org by Kangaroo Written in March by William Wordsworth The cock is crowing, the stream is flowing, The small birds twitter, the lake doth glitter, The grain field sleeps in the sun, The oldest and youngest are at work with the strongest, The cattle are grazing, their heads never raising, There are forty feeding like one, Like an army defeated, the snow hath retreated, and now doth fare ill, on the top of the bare hill. The ploughboy is whooping anon, anon. There's joy in the mountains, there's life in the fountains. Small clouds are sailing, blue sky prevailing, the rain over and gone. End of section 6. This recording is in the public domain. Section 7 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale, recorded for LibriVox.org by Rosehip. When the Hounds of Spring by Algernon Charles Swinburne 
when the hounds of spring are on winter's traces the mother of months in meadow or plain fills the shadows and windy places with lisp of leaves and ripple of rain and the brown bright nightingale amorous is half assuaged for Itilus, for the thracian ships and the foreign faces the tongueless vigil and all the pain come with bows bent and with emptying of quivers maiden most perfect lady of light with a noise of winds and many rivers with a clamour of waters and with might bind on thy sandals o thou most fleet over the splendour and speed of thy feet for the faint east quickens the wan west shivers round the feet of the day and the feet of the night where shall we find her how shall we sing to her fold our hands round her knees and cling o oh, that man's heart were as fire and could spring to her fire or the strength of the streams that spring for the stars and the winds are unto her as raiment as songs of the harp player for the risen stars and the fallen cling to her and the southwest wind and the west wind sing for winter's rains and ruins are over and all the season of snows and sins the day's dividing lover and lover the light that loses the night that wins and time remembered is grief forgotten and frosts are slain and flowers begotten and in green underwood and cover blossom by blossom the spring begins end of section 7 this recording is in the public domain Section 8 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Kangaroo. Song by Robert Browning The year's at the spring, and day's at the morn. Morning's at seven, the hillside's dew-pearled. The lark's on the wing, the snail's on the thorn. God is in his heaven, all's right with the world. End of section 8. This recording is in the public domain. Section 9 of Rainbow Gold. Poems Old and New. Selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. Under the Greenwood Tree by William Shakespeare. Under the Greenwood Tree, who loves to lie with me, and turn his merry note unto the sweet bird's throat come hither come hither come hither here shall he see no enemy but winter and rough weather who doth ambition shun and loves to live in the sun seeking the food he eats and pleased with what he gets come hither come hither come hither here shall he see no enemy but winter and rough weather. End of section 9. This recording is in the public domain. Section 10 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. To Violets by Robert Herrick. Welcome, maids of honor you do bring in the spring and wait upon her she has virgins many fresh and fair yet you are more sweet than any you're the maiden posies and so graced to be placed for damask roses yet though thus respected by and by ye do lie poor girls neglected end of section ten 
This recording is in the public domain. Section 11 of Rainbow Gold Poems Old and New Selected by Sarah Teasdale Recorded for LibriVox.org by Kangaroo On May Morning by John Milton Now the bright morning star, day's harbinger, Comes dancing from the east and leads with her The flowery May, who from her green lap throws the yellow cowslip and the pale primrose. Hail, bounteous May, that doth inspire mirth and youth and warm desire. Woods and groves are of thy dressing. Hill and dale doth boast thy blessing. Thus we salute thee with our early song and welcome thee and wish thee long. End of section 11 this recording is in the public domain. Section 12 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, Selected by Sarah Teasdale, Recorded for LibriVox.org, by Betty B. The Leprechaun, or Fairy Shoemaker Little cowboy, what have you heard? Up on the lonely Rath's green mound, Only the plaintive yellow bird, sighing in sultry fields around cherry 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 chee only the grasshopper and the bee tip tap rip rap tick a tack too scarlet leather sewn together this will make a shoe left right pull it tight summer days are warm underground in winter laughing at the storm lay your ear close to the hill do you not catch the tiny clamor busy click of elfin hammer Voice of the leprechaun singing shrill as he merrily plies his trade. He's a span and a quarter in height. Get him in sight, hold him tight, and you're a made man. You watch your cattle the summer day, sup on potatoes, sleep in the hay. How would you like to roll in your carriage? Look for a duchess's daughter in marriage. Seize the shoemaker, then you may. Big boots a-hunting, sandals in the hall white for a wedding feast pink for a ball this way that way so we make a shoe getting rich every stitch tick tack too nine and ninety treasure crocks this keen miser fairy hath hidden mountains woods and rocks ruin and round tower cave and wrath and where the cormorants build from time of old guarded by him each of them filled full to the brim with gold I caught him at work one day myself, in the castle ditch, where foxglove grows, a wrinkled, wizened, and bearded elf, spectacles stuck on his pointed nose, silver buckles to his hose, leather apron, shoe in his lap, rip-rap, tip-tap, tack-tack too, a grasshopper on my cap. Away the moth flew. Buskins for a fairy prince, brogues for his son, pay me well, pay me well, when the job is done the rogue was mine beyond a doubt i stared at him he stared at me servant sir humph says he and pulled a snuff-box out he took a long pinch looked better pleased the queer little leprechaun offered the box with a whimsical grace poof he flung the dust in my face and while i sneezed was gone william allingham end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Section 13 of Rainbow Gold Poems Old and New Selected by Sarah Teasdale Recorded for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama Hunting Song by Sir Walter Scott Waken, lords and ladies gay, On the mountain dawns the day, all the jolly chase is here with hawk and horse and hunting spear hounds are in their couples yelling hawks are whistling horns are knelling merrily merrily mingle they waken lords and ladies gay waken lords and ladies gay the mist has left the mountain gray springlets in the dawn are steaming diamonds on the brake are gleaming 
And foresters have busy been To track the buck in thicket green. Now we come to chant our lay, Waken, lords and ladies gay. Waken, lords and ladies gay, To the greenwood haste away, we can show you where he lies, fleet of foot and tall of size. We can show the marks he made, when gainst the oak his antlers frayed. You shall see him brought to bay, waken lords and ladies gay. Louder, louder chant the lay, waken lords and ladies gay. Tell them youth and mirth and glee run a course as well as we. Time, stern huntsman, who can balk, Staunch as hound and fleet as hawk? Think of this and rise with day, Gentle lords and ladies gay. End of section 13. This recording is in the public domain. Section 14 of Rainbow Gold. Poems Old and New. Selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. The Lady of Shalott by Alfred Tennyson. Part 1. On either side of the river lie long fields of barley and rye. The clothe the wold and meet the sky, and through the field the road runs by. To many towered Camelot, and up and down the people go, gazing where the lilies blow round an island there below the island of shalott willows whiten aspens quiver little breezes dusk and shiver through the wave that runs for ever by the island in the river flowing down to camelot four gray walls and four gray towers overlook a space of flowers and the silent island embowers the lady of shalott by the margin willow veiled slide the heavy burges trailed by slow horses and unhailed the shallop flitteth silken laden skimming down to camelot but who hath seen her wave her hand or at the casement seen her stand or is she known in all the land the lady of shalott only reapers reaping early in among the bearded barley hear a song that echoes cheerily from the river winding clearly down to towered camelot and by the moon the reaper weary hiling sheaves in uplands airy listening whispers tis the fairy lady of shalott part two there she weaves by night and day a magic web with colours gay she has heard a whisper say a curse is on her if she stay to look down to camelot she knows not what the curse may be and so she weaveth steadily and little other care hath she the lady of shalott and moving through a mirror clear that hangs before her all the year shadows of the world appear there she sees the highway near winding down to camelot there the river eddy whirls and there the surly village churls and the red cloaks of market girls pass onward from shalott Sometimes a troop of damsels glad, an abbot on an ambling pad, sometimes a curly shepherd lad, or a long haired page in crimson clad, goes by to towered Camelot, and sometimes through the mirror blue the knights come riding two and two. She hath no loyal knight and true, the Lady of Shalott. But in her web she still delights to weave the mirror's magic sights, and often through the silent nights a funeral with plumes and lights and music went to camelot or when the moon was overhead came two young lovers lately wed i am half sick of shadows she said the lady of shalott part three a bow shot from her bower eaves he rode between the barley sheaves the sun came dazzling through the leaves and flamed upon the brazen graves a bold sir lancelot a red cross knight bearing for ever kneeled to a lady his shield that sparkled on the yellow field beside remote shalott the jimmy bridle glittered free like to some branch of stars we see hung on the golden galaxy the bridle bells rang merrily as he rode down to camelot and from his blazoned baldric slung a mighty silver bugle hung 
and as he rode his armor rung beside remote shalott all in the blue unclouded weather thick jewels shone the saddle leather the helmet and the helmet feather burned like one burning flame together as he rode down to camelot as often through the purple night below the starry clusters bright some bearded meteor trailing light moves over still shalott his broad clear bow in sunlight glowed on burnished hooves his war-horse trode from underneath his helmet flowed his coal-black curls as on he rode as he rode down to camelot from the bank and from the river he flashed into the crystal mirror tira lyra by the river sang sir lancelot she left the web she left the loom she made three paces through the room she saw the water lily bloom she saw the helmet and the plume she looked down to camelot out flew the web and floated wide the mirror cracked from side to side the curse is come upon me cried the lady of shalott part four in the stormy east wind straining the pale yellow woods were waning the broad stream in its banks complaining heavily the low sky raining over towered camelot part four in the stormy east wind straining the pale yellow woods were waning the broad stream in his banks complaining heavily the low sky raining over towered camelot down she came and found a boat beneath a willow left afloat and round about the prow she wrote the lady of shalott and down the river's dim expanse like some bold seer in a trance seeing all his own mischance with a glassy countenance did she look to camelot and at the closing of the day she loosed the chain and down she lay the broad stream bore her far away the lady of shalott lying robed in snowy white that loosely flew to left and right the leaves upon her falling light through the noises of the night she floated down to camelot and as the boat head wound along the willowy hills and fields among they heard her singing her last song the lady of shalott heard a carol mournful holy chanted loudly chanted lowly till her blood was frozen slowly and her eyes were darkened wholly turned to towered camelot for ere she reached upon the tide the first house by the waterside singing in her song she died the lady of shalott under tower and balcony by garden wall and gallery a gleaming shape she floated by dead pale between the houses high silent into camelot out upon the wharfs they came knight and burgher lord and dame and round the prow they read her name the lady of shalott who is this and what is here and in the lighted palace near died the sound of royal cheer and they crossed themselves for fear all the knights of camelot but lancelot mused a little space he said she has a lovely face god in his mercy lend her grace the lady of shalott End of section 14. This recording is in the public domain. Section 15 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. Hymn to Diana by Ben Jonson. Hymn to Diana queen and huntress caste and fair now the sun is laid to sleep seated in thy silver chair state in wonted manner keep hesperus entreats thy light goddess excellently bright earth let not thy envious shade dare itself to interpose Cynthia's shining orb was made heaven to clear when day did close. Bless us then with wished sight, goddess excellently bright. 
Lay thy bow of pearl apart and thy crystal shining quiver. Give unto the flying heart space to breathe, how short soever. Thou that makest a day of night, Goddess excellently bright. Ben Jonson End of section 15 This recording is in the public domain. Section 16 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Rosehip. The Song of Wandering Angus by William Butler Yeats. I went out to the hazel wood because a fire was in my head and cut and peeled a hazel wand and hooked a berry to a thread and when white moths were on the wing and moth-like stars were flickering out i dropped the berry in a stream and caught a little silver trout when i had laid it on the floor i went to blow the fire aflame but something rustled on the floor and someone called me by my name it had become a glimmering girl with apple blossom in her hair who called me by my name and ran and faded through the brightening air though i am old with wandering through hollow lands and hilly lands i will find out where she has gone and kiss her lips and take her hands and walk among long dappled grass and pluck till time and times are done the silver apples of the moon the golden apples of the sun end of section 16 this recording is in the public domain Section 17 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale, recorded for LibriVox.org, by Larry Wilson. The Shepherd to His Love, by Christopher Marlowe. Come live with me and be my love, and we will all the pleasures prove that hills and valleys, dales and fields and woods, or steepy mountain yields. And we will sit upon the rocks, seeing the shepherds feed their flocks by shallow rivers to whose falls melodious birds sing madrigals and i will make thee beds of roses and a thousand fragrant posies a cap of flowers and a kirtle embroidered all with leaves of myrtle a gown made of the finest wool which from our pretty lambs we pull fair lined at slippers for the cold with buckles of the purest gold a belt of straw and ivy buds with coral clasps and amber studs and if these pleasures may thee move come live with me and be my love thy silver dishes for thy meat as precious as the gods do eat shall on an ivory table be prepared each day for thee and me the shepherd swains shall dance and sing for thy delight each may morning if these delights thy mind may move then live with me and be my love. End of section 17. This recording is in the public domain. Section 18 of Rainbow Gold Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org. Robin Hood and the Butcher, Author Unknown Come, all you brave gallants, and listen a while, With hay down, down, and a down, That are in the bowers within, For of Robin Hood, that archer good, A song I intend for to sing. Upon a time it chanced so, Bold Robin in forest did spy A jolly butcher, with a bonny fine mare, With his flesh to the market did hie. Good morrow, good fellow, said jolly Robin. What food hast, tell unto me, and thy trade to me tell, and where thou dost dwell, 
for I like well thy company. The butcher, he answered Jolly Robin, No matter where I dwell, for a butcher I am, and to Nottingham I am going my flesh to sell. What is the price of thy flesh? said Jolly Robin. Come, tell it soon unto me. And the price of thy mare, be she never so dear, for a butcher fain would I be. The price of my flesh, the butcher replied, I soon will tell unto thee. With my bonny mare, and they are not dear, four mark thou must give unto me. Four mark I will give thee, saith Jolly Robin. Four mark it shall be thy fee. Thy money come count, and let me mount, for a butcher I fain would be. Now, Robin, he is to Nottingham gone, his butcher's trade for to begin. With good intent to the sheriff he went, and there he took up his inn. When other butchers they opened their meat, bold Robin he then begun, but how for to sell he knew not well, for a butcher he was but young. When other butchers no meat could sell, Robin got both gold and fee, for he sold more meat for one penny than others could do for three. But when he sold his meat so fast, no butcher by him could thrive, for he sold more meat for one penny than others could do for five, which made the butchers of Nottingham to study as they did stand, saying, surely he was some prodigal that had sold his father's land. The butchers, they stepped to Jolly Robin, acquainted with him for to be, Come, brother, one said, we be all of one trade. Come, will you go dine with me? Accursed of his heart, said Jolly Robin, that a butcher doth deny. I will go with you, my brethren true, and as fast as I can hie. But when to the sheriff's house they came, to dinner they hide apace. And Robin, he the man must be before them all to say grace. Pray God bless us all, said Jolly Robin, and our meat within this place. A cup of sack so good will nourish our blood, and so I do end my grace. Come, fill us more wine, said Jolly Robin. Let us merry be while we do stay, for wine and good cheer, be it never so dear, I vow I the reckoning will pay. Come, brothers, be merry, said Jolly Robin. Let us drink and never give o'er, for the shot I will pay ere I go my way, and it cost me five pounds and more. This is a mad blade, the butchers then said, says the sheriff. He is some prodigal that some land has sold for silver and gold, and now he doth mean to spend all. Hast thou any horn beasts? the sheriff replied. Good fellow to sell unto me? Yes, that I have, good master sheriff. I have hundreds, two or three. And a hundred acre of good free land, if you please it to see, and I'll make you as good assurance of it as ever my father made me. The sheriff he saddled a good palfrey with three hundred pound in gold, and away he went with bold Robin Hood, his horned beasts to behold. Away then the sheriff and Robin did ride, to the forest of Mary Sherwood. Then the sheriff did say, God bless us this day, from a man they call Robin Hood. But when that a little further they came, bold Robin, he chanced to spy a hundred head of good red deer, come tripping the sheriff full nigh. How like you my horned beasts, good master sheriff? They be fat and fair for to see. I tell thee, good fellow, I would I were gone, for I like not thy company. Then Robin he set his horn to his mouth, and blew but blasts three. Then quickly anon there came little John and all his company. What is your will, then said little John? Good master, come tell it to me. I have brought hither the sheriff of Nottingham, this day to dine with thee. He is welcome to me, then said Little John. I hope he will honestly pay. I know he has gold, if it be but well told, will serve us to drink a whole day. Then Robin took his mantle from his back, and laid it upon the ground, and out of the sheriff's port mantle he told three hundred pound. The Robin he brought him thorough the wood, and set him on his dapple grey. Oh, have me commended to your wife at home. So Robin went laughing away. End of section 18. This recording is in the public domain. Section 19 of Rainbow Gold Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale, recorded for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. A Sea Song by Alan Cunningham. A wet sheet and a flowing sea, a wind that follows fast, 
and fills the white and rustling sail and bends the gallant mast and bends the gallant mast my boys while like the eagle free away the good ship flies and leaves old england on the lee oh for a soft and gentle wind i heard a fair one cry but give to me the snoring breeze and white waves heaving high and white waves heaving high my boys the good ship tight and free the world of waters is our home and merry men are we there's tempest in yon horned moon and lightning in you cloud and hark the music mariners the wind is piping loud the wind is piping loud my boys the lightning flashes free while the hollow oak our palace is our heritage the sea in the section nineteen this recording is in the public domain section twenty of rainbow gold poems old and new Selected by Sarah Teasdale, recorded for LibriVox.org, by Felicity Twelve, Down Under, Epitaph on a Hair, by William Cowper. Here lies whom hound did ne'er pursue, nor swifter greyhound follow, whose foot ne'er tainted morning dew, nor ear heard huntsman's hallo. Old Tinny, surliest of his kind, who nursed with tender care and to domestic bounds confined was still a wild jack hare though duly from my hand he took his pittance every night he did it with a jealous look and when he could would bite his diet was of wheat and bread and milk and oats and straw thistles or lettuces instead with sand to scour his maw on twigs of hawthorn he regaled on pippin's russet peel and when his juicy salads failed sliced carrot pleased him well a turkey carpet was his lawn whereon he loved to bound to skip and gambol like a fawn and swing his rump around his frisking was at evening hours for then he lost his fear but most before approaching showers or when a storm drew near eight years and five round rolling moons he thus saw steal away dozing out all his idle noons and every night at play i kept him for his humour's sake for he would oft beguile my heart of thoughts that made it ache and force me to a smile but now beneath this walnut shade he finds his long last home and waits in snug concealment laid till gentler puss shall come he still more aged feels the shocks from which no care can save and partner once of Tinny's box must soon partake his grave. End of section 20. This recording is in the public domain. Section 21 of Rainbow Gold Poems Old and New Selected by Sarah Teasdale Recorded for LibriVox.org by Kangaroo the pilgrim from the pilgrim's progress by john bunyan who would true valor see let him come hither one here will constant be come wind come weather there's no discouragement shall make him once relent his first avowed intent to be a pilgrim Whoso beset him round with dismal stories, Do but themselves confound his strength the more is. No lion can him fright, He'll with a giant fight, But he will have a right to be a pilgrim. Hobgoblin nor foul fiend can daunt his spirit, He knows he at the end shall life inherit. Then fancies fly away. He'll not fear what men say. He'll labor night and day to be a pilgrim. End of section 11. This recording is in the public domain. Section 22 of Rainbow Gold. Poems Old and New. Selected by Sarah Teasdale. 
Recorded for LibriVox.org by Twinkle. Section 22. Lullaby for Titania by William Shakespeare. You spotted snakes with double tongue, thorny hedgehogs be not seen, newts and blind worms do no wrong, come not near our fairy queen. Philomel with melody, sing in our sweet lullaby, lulla, lulla, lullaby, lulla, lulla, lullaby, never harm, nor spell, nor charm, come our lovely lady nigh, so good night with lullaby. Weaving spiders, come not here. Hence, you long-legged spinners, hence. Beetles black, approach not near. Worm nor snail, do no offense. Philomel with melody, sing in our sweet lullaby. Lulla, lulla, lullaby. Lulla, lulla, lullaby. Never harm, nor spell, nor charm. Come, our lovely lady nigh. So good night with lullaby. End of section 22. This recording is in the public domain. Section 23 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, Selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Betty B. Israfel And the angel Israfel, whose heartstrings are a lute, and who has the sweetest voice of all god's creations koran in heaven a spirit doth dwell whose heart-strings are a lute none sings so wildly well as the angel israfel and the giddy stars so legends tell ceasing their hymns attend the spell of his voice all mute tottering above in her highest noon the enamoured moon blushes with love while to listen the red leaven with the rapid pleiads even which were seven pauses in heaven and they say the starry choir and the other listening things that israfeli's fire is owing to that lyre by which he sits and sings the trembling living wire of those unusual strings but the skies that angel trod where deep thoughts are a duty where love's a grown-up god where the hoary glances are imbued with all the beauty which we worship in a star therefore thou art not wrong israfeli who despisest an unimpassioned song to thee the laurels belong best bard because the wisest merrily live and long the ecstasies above with thy burning measures suit thy grief thy joy thy hate thy love with the fervor of thy lute well may the stars be mute yes heaven is thine but this is a world of sweets and sours our flowers are merely flowers and the shadow of thy perfect bliss is the sunshine of ours if i could dwell where isra fell hath dwelt and he where i he might not sing so wildly well a mortal melody while a bolder note than this might swell from my lyre within the sky. Edgar Allan Poe. End of section 23. This recording is in the public domain. Section 24 of Rainbow Gold. Poems Old and New. Selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Jaffar by Leah Hunt Jaffar, the Barmecide, the good vizier, The poor man's hope, the friend without a peer. Jaffar was dead, slain by a doom unjust, And guilty Haron, sullen with mistrust, Of what the good and even the bad might say, Ordained that no man living from that day should dare to speak his name on pain of death all arabia and persia held their breath all but the brave mandir he proud to show how far for love a grateful soul could go and facing death for very scorn and grief for his great heart wanted a great relief stood forth in baghdad daily in the square where once had stood a happy house and there 
harangued the tremblers at the scimitar on all they owed to the divine Jafar. Bring me this man, the caliph cried. The man was brought, was gazed upon. The mutes began to bind his arms. Welcome, brave cords, cried he. From bonds far worse, Jafar delivered me. From wants, from shames, from loveless household fears, made a man's eyes friends with delicious tears. Restored me, loved me, put me on a par with his great self. How can I pay Jafar? Haran, who felt that on a soul like this, the mightiest vengeances could but fall amiss, now deigned to smile as one great lord of fate might smile upon another half as great. He said, Let worth grow frenzied if it will. The caliph's judgments shall be master still. Go, and since gifts so move thee, take this gem, the richest in the Tartar's diadem, and hold the giver as thou deemest fit. Gifts, cried the friend, he took, and holding it, high towards the heavens, as though to meet his star, exclaimed, This, too, I owe to thee, Jafar. End of section 24. This recording is in the public domain. Section 25 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, Selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Betty B. A Song of Sherwood Sherwood in the twilight, is Robin Hood awake? Gray and ghostly shadows are gliding through the brake. Shadows of the dappled deer, dreaming of the morn, Dreaming of a shadowy man that winds a shadowy horn. Robin Hood is here again, all his merry thieves. Hear a ghostly bugle note shivering through the leaves, Calling as he used to call, faint and far away, in Sherwood, in Sherwood, about the break of day. Merry, merry England has kissed the lips of June. All the wings of fairyland were here beneath the moon, like a flight of rose leaves fluttering in a mist of opal and ruby and pearl and amethyst. Merry, merry England is waking as of old with eyes of blither hazel and hair of brighter gold, for Robin Hood is here again beneath the bursting spray in sherwood in sherwood about the break of day love is in the greenwood building him a house of wild rose and hawthorn and honeysuckle boughs love is in the greenwood dawn is in the skies and marian is waiting with a glory in her eyes hark the dazzled laverock climbs the golden steep marian is waiting is robin hood asleep Round the fairy grass rings, frolic elf and fay, in Sherwood, in Sherwood, about the break of day. Oberon, Oberon, rake away the gold, rake away the red leaves, roll away the mold, rake away the gold leaves, roll away the red, and wake Will Scarlet from his leafy forest bed. Friar Tuck and Little John are riding down together, with quarter staff and drinking can and gray goose feather. The dead are coming back again, the years are rolled away, in Sherwood, in Sherwood, about the break of day. Softly over Sherwood the south wind blows, all the heart of England hid in every rose. Here's across the greenwood the sunny whisper leap, Sherwood in the red dawn, is Robin Hood asleep? Hark, the voice of England wakes him as of old, and, shattering the silence, with a cry of brighter gold bugles in the greenwood echo from the steep sherwood in the red dawn is robin hood asleep where the deer are gliding down the shadowy glen all across the glades of fern he calls his merry men doublets of the lincoln green glancing through the may in sherwood in sherwood about the break of day calls them and they answer from aisles of oak and ash rings the follow follow and the boughs begin to crash the ferns begin to flutter and the flowers begin to fly and through the crimson dawning the robber band goes by robin 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 all his merry thieves 
answer as the bugle note shivers through the leaves calling as he used to call faint and far away in sherwood in sherwood about the break of day alfred noise end of poem this recording is in the public domain section twenty six of rainbow gold poems old and new selected by sarah teasdale recorded for librivox dot org by larry wilson the destruction of sennacherib by lord byron seven ten b c the assyrian came down like the wolf on the fold and his cohorts were gleaming in purple and gold and the sheen of their spears was like stars on the sea when the blue wave rolls nightly on deep galilee like the leaves of the forest when summer is green that host with their banners at sunset were seen like the leaves of the forest when autumn hath blown that host on the morrow lay withered and strown for the angel of death spread his wings on the blast and breathed in the face of the foe as he passed and the eyes of the sleepers waxed deadly and chill and their hearts but once heaved and forever grew still and there lay the steed with his nostrils all wide but through it there rolled not the breath of his pride and the foam of his gasping lay white on the turf and cold as the spray of the rock beating surf and there lay the rider distorted and pale with the dew on his brow and the rust on his mail and the tents were all silent the banners alone the lances unlifted the trumpet unblown and the widows of asher are loud in their wail and the idols are broke in the temple of baal and the might of the gentile unsmote by the sword hath melted like snow in the glance of the lord end of section twenty six this recording is in the public domain Section 27 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, Selected by Sarah Teasdale, Recorded for LibriVox.org, by Betty B. Evry, March 14, 1590. Now glory to the Lord of hosts, from whom all glories are, and glory to our sovereign liege, King Henry of Navarre. Now let there be the merry sound of music and of dance, through thy cornfields green and sunny vines, o pleasant land of france and thou rochelle our own rochelle proud city of the waters again let rapture light the eyes of all thy mourning daughters as thou wert constant in our ills be joyous in our joy for cold and stiff and still are they who wrought thy walls annoy hurrah hurrah a single field hath turned the chance of war hurrah hurrah for Evry and henry of navarre oh how our hearts were beating when at the dawn of day we saw the army of the league drawn out in long array with all its priest-led citizens and all its rebel peers and appenzel's stout infantry and edgemont's flemish spears there rode the brood of false lorraine the curses of our land and dark mayenne was in the midst a truncheon in his hand and as we looked on them we thought of Sen's empurpled flood, and good Caligny's hoary hair all dabbled with his blood. And we cried unto the living God, who rules the fate of war, to fight for his own holy name, and Henry of Navarre. The king is come to marshal us, in all his armor dressed, and he has bound a snow-white plume upon his gallant crest. He looked upon his people, and a tear was in his eye, he looked upon the traitors, and his glance was stern and high. Right graciously he smiled on us, as rolled from wing to wing. Down all our line a deafening shout, God save our Lord the King. And if my standard-bearer fall, as fall full well he may, for never saw I promise yet of such a bloody fray. Press where ye see my white plume shine amidst the ranks of war and be your aura flame to-day the helmet of navarre hurrah the foes are moving hark to the mingled din of fife and steed and trump and drum 
and roaring culver in the fiery duke is pricking fast across st andre's plain with all the hireling chivalry of gilders and almain now by the lips of those ye love fair gentlemen of france charge for the golden lilies upon them with the lance a thousand spurs are striking deep a thousand spears in rest a thousand knights are pressing close behind the snow-white crest and in they burst and on they rushed while like a guiding star amidst the thickest carnage blazed the helmet of navarre now god be praised the day is ours mayenne hath turned his reign domal hath cried for quarter the flemish count is slain their ranks are breaking like thin clouds before a biscay gale the field is heaped with bleeding steeds and flags and cloven mail and then we thought on vengeance and all along our van remember saint bartholomew was passed from man to man but out spake gentle henry no frenchman is my foe down down with every foreigner but let your brethren go oh was there ever such a knight in friendship or in war as our sovereign lord king henry the soldier of navarre ho maidens of vienna ho maidens of lucerne weep weep and rend your hair for those who never shall return ho philip send for charity thy mexican pistoles that antwerp monks may sing a mass for thy poor spearmen souls ho gallant nobles of the league look that your arms be bright ho burghers of st genevieve keep watch and ward to-night for our god hath crushed the tyrant our god hath raised the slave and mocked the counsel of the wise and the valor of the brave then glory to his holy name from whom all glories are and glory to our sovereign lord king henry of navarre thomas babington macaulay end of section twenty seven this recording is in the public domain section twenty eight of rainbow gold poems old and new selected by sarah teasdale recorded for librivox .org by larry wilson the tiger by william blake tiger tiger burning bright in the forests of the night what immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry in what distant deeps or skies burnt the fire of thine eyes on what wings dare he aspire what the hand dare seize the fire and what shoulder and what heart could twist the sinews of thy heart and when thy heart began to beat what dread hand and what dread feet what the hammer what the chain in what furnace was thy brain what the anvil what dread grasp dare its deadly terrors clasp when the stars threw down their spears and watered heaven with their tears did he smile his work to see did he who made the lamb make thee tiger tiger burning bright in the forests of the night what immortal hand or eye dare frame thy fearful symmetry end of section twenty eight this recording is in the public domain Section 29 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale, recorded for LibriVox.org by Rosehip. The Terrible Robber Men by Podrick Colum. Oh, I wish the sun was bright in the sky, and the fox was back in his den, oh. For always I'm hearing the passing by of the terrible robber men, oh the terrible robber men. Oh, what does the fox carry over the rye when it's bright in the morn again, oh? And what is it making the lonesome cry with the terrible robber men, oh, the terrible robber men? Oh, I wish the sun was bright in the sky and the fox was back in his den, oh, for always I'm hearing the passing by of the terrible robber men, oh, the terrible robber men. End of section 29. This recording is in the public domain.
Section 30 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale, recorded for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Sir Patrick Spence, by an author unknown. The king sits in Dunfermline tune, drinking the blood-red wine. Oh, where will I get a skeely skipper to sail this new ship of mine? Oh, up and spake an elder knight, sat at the king's right knee. Sir Patrick Spence is the best sailor that ever sailed the sea. Our king has written a braid letter and sealed it with his hand, and sent it to Sir Patrick Spence was walking on the strand. To Norway, to Norway, to Norway over the fame, the king's daughter of Norway, tis thou mon bring her ham. The first word that Sir Patrick read, say loud, loud laugh it he, the next word that Sir Patrick read, the tear blinded his ee. Oh, why is this has done this deed, and told the king of me, to send us out, at this time of the year, to sail upon the sea? Be it wind, be it wit, be it hail, be it sleet, our ship must sail the fame, the king's daughter of Norway, tis we must fetch her hame. They hoist their sails on Monday morn, with all the speed they may, and they are landed in Norway, upon a wednesday they hadn't a been a week a week in norway but twa when that the lords of norway began aloud to say ye scottishmen spend all king's gold and all queenie's fee ye lie ye lie ye liars loud full loud i hear ye lie for i have brought as much white money as can my man and me and i have brought a half full of good red gowd out over the sea with me make ready make ready my merry men all our good ship sails the moon now ever a lake my master dear i fear a deadly storm i saw the new moon late yestreen with the old moon in her arm and if we gang to sea master i fear we'll come to harm they hadn't a sailed a league a league a league but barely three when the lift grew dark and the wind blew loud and girly grew the sea the anchor's brack and the topmast's lap, it was such a deadly storm, and the waves came over the broken ship till all her sides were torn. Oh, where will I get a good sailor to take my helm in hand till I get up to the tall topmast to see if I can spy land? Oh, here am I, a sailor good, to take the helm in hand till ye get up to the tall topmast, but I fear you'll never spy land. He hadn't a gone a step, a step, a step but barely on, when a bout flew out of our goodly ship, and the salt sea it came in. Gay fetch a web o' the silken clays, another of the tween, and web em into our ship's side, and letten the sea come in. They fetched a web o' the silken clays, another of the tween, and they wept em round that good ship's side, but still the sea came in. O oh, lathe, lathe, where are good Scots lords to wet their cork heeled shoon, but lang ere all the play was played, they wat their hats a boon. A money was the feather bed that floated on the foam, and money was the good lord's son that never mare came ham. The ladies rang their fingers white, the maidens tore their hair, all for the sake of their true loves, for them they'll see no mare. O oh, lang lang may the ladies sit with their fans into their hand before they see Sir Patrick Spence come sailing to the strand. And lang lang may the maidens sit with the gold kames in their hair, awaiting for their ain dear loves, for them they'll see no mare. O oh, forty miles off Abadur, this fifty fathom steep, and there lies good Sir Patrick Spence with the Scots lords at his feet. End of section 30. This recording is in the public domain. Section 31 of Rainbow Gold Poems Old and New Selected by Sarah Teasdale Recorded for LibriVox.org by Kangaroo Blow, Blow, Thou Winter Wind by William Shakespeare Blow, Blow, Thou Winter Wind Thou art not so unkind as man's ingratitude. Thy tooth is not so keen 
because thou art not seen, although thy breath be rude. Hey ho, sing hey ho, unto the green holly. Most friendship is feigning, most loving mere folly. Then hey ho, the holly, this life is most jolly. Freeze, freeze, thou bitter sky, thou dost not bite so nigh. As benefits forgot, though thou the waters warp, thy sting is not so sharp, as friend remember not. Hey ho, sing hey ho unto the green holly, most friendship is feigning, most loving mere folly. Then hey ho, the holly, this life is most jolly. End of section 31. This recording is in the public domain. Section 32 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale, recorded for LibriVox.org by Ian King. The Pied Piper of Hamelin, A Child's Story, by Robert Browning. Hamelin Towns in Brunswick, by famous Hanover City, the river Weser, deep and wide, washes its wall on the southern side, a pleasanter spot you never spied. But... When begins my ditty, almost five hundred years ago, To see the townsfolk suffer so, From vermin was a pity. Rats, they fought the dogs and killed the cats, And bit the babies in the cradles, And ate the cheeses out of the vats, And licked the soup from the cook's own ladles, Split open the kegs of salted sprats, Made nests inside men's Sunday hats, And even spoiled the women's chats, by drowning their speaking with shrieking and squeaking in fifty different sharps and flats. At last, the people in a body to the town hall came flocking. "'Tis clear,' cried they, "'our mares are noddy, and as for our corporation, shocking. To think we buy gowns lined with ermine for dolts that can't or won't determine what's best to rid us of our vermin. You hope, because you're old and obese, to find in the furry civic robe ease. Rouse up, sirs, give your brains a racking to find the remedy we're lacking, or, sure as fate, we'll send you packing. At this the mayor and corporation quaked with a mighty consternation. An hour they sat in council. At length the mayor broke silence. For a gilder I'd my ermine gown sell, I wish I were a mile hence. It's easy to bid one rack one's brain. I'm sure my poor head aches again. I've scratched it so, and all in vain. Oh, for a trap, a trap, a trap. Just as he said this, what should hap? At the chamber door, but a gentle tap. Bless us, cried the mayor, what's that? With the corporation, as he sat, Looking little, though wondrous fat, Nor brighter was his eye, nor moister, Than a too long opened oyster, Save when at noon his paunch grew mutinous, For a plate of turtle, green and glutinous. Only a scraping of shoes on the mat, Anything like the sound of a rat, Makes my heart go pitter-pat. Come in, the mayor cried, looking bigger, And in did come the strangest figure. His queer long coat, from heel to head, Was half of yellow and half of red, And he himself was tall and thin, With sharp blue eyes, each like a pin, And light loose hair, yet swarthy skin, No tuft on cheek, nor beard on chin, But lips, where smiles went out and in, There was no guessing his kith and kin, And nobody could enough admire The tall man, and his quaint attire. Quoth one, It's as my great-grandsire, Starting up at the trump of doom's tone, Had walked this way from his painted tombstone. He advanced to the council table, And, please your honours, he said, I'm able, by means of a secret charm, To draw all creatures living beneath the sun, That creep or swim 
or fly or run after me so as you never saw and i chiefly use my charm on creatures that do people harm the mole and toad and newt and viper and people call me the pied piper and here they noticed round his neck a scarf of red and yellow stripe to match with his coat of the selfsame check and at the scarf's end hung a pipe and his fingers they noticed were ever straying as if impatient to be playing upon this pipe as low it dangled over his vesture so old fangled yet said he poor piper as i am in tartary i freed the cam last june from his huge swarms of gnats i eased in asia the nizam of a monstrous brood of vampire bats and as for what your brain bewilders if i can rid your town of rats will you give me a thousand guilders one fifty thousand was the exclamation of the astonished mayor and corporation into the street the piper stepped smiling first a little smile as if he knew what magic slept in his quiet pipe the while then like a musical adept to blow the pipe his lips he wrinkled and green and blue his sharp eyes twinkled like a candle flame where salt is sprinkled and ere three shrill notes the pipe uttered you heard as if an army muttered and the muttering grew to a grumbling and the grumbling grew to a mighty rumbling and out of the houses the rats came tumbling great rats small rats lean rats brawny rats brown rats black rats grey rats tawny rats grave old plodders gay young friskers fathers mothers uncles cousins cocking tails and pricking whiskers families by tens and dozens brothers sisters husbands wives followed the piper for their lives from street to street he piped advancing and step for step they followed dancing until they came to the river vesa wherein all plunged and perished save one who stout as julius caesar swam across and lived to carry as he the manuscript he cherished to ratland home his commentary which was at the first shrill notes of the pipe i heard the sound as of scraping tripe and putting apples wondrous ripe into a cider press's gripe and a moving away of pickle tub boards and a leaving a jar of conserve cupboards and a drawing the corks of train oil flasks and a breaking the hoops of butter casks and it seemed as if a voice sweeter far than by harp or by psaltery is breathed called out O oh, rats rejoice the world is grown to one vast dry psaltery so munch on crunch on take your nuncheon breakfast supper dinner luncheon and just as a bulky sugar puncheon already staved like a giant sun shone glorious scarce an inch before me just as methought it said come bore me i found the vaser rolling o'er me you should have heard the hamlin people ringing the bells till they rocked the steeple go cried the mayor and get long poles poke out the nests and block up the holes consult with carpenters and builders and leave in our town not even a trace of the rats when suddenly up the face of the piper perked in the market-place with a first if you please my thousand guilders a thousand guilders the mayor looked blue so did the corporation too for council dinners made rare havoc with claret mosel van der graaf hock and half the money would replenish their cellar's biggest butt with rhenish to pay this sum to a wandering fellow with a gypsy coat of red and yellow beside quoth the mayor with a knowing wink our business was done at the river's brink we saw with our eyes the vermin sink and what's dead can't come to life i think so friend we're not the folks to shrink from the duty of giving you something to drink and a matter of money to put in your poke but as for the guilders what we spoke of them as you very well know was in joke beside our losses have made us thrifty 
A thousand guilders? Come, take fifty. The piper's face fell, and he cried, No trifling, I can't wait, beside. I've promised to visit by dinner time, Baghdad, and accept the prime Of the head cook's pottage, all he's rich in, For having left in the caliph's kitchen, Of a nest of scorpions, no survivor. With him, I proved no bargain driver. With you, don't think I'll bait a stiver, And folks who put me in a passion May find me pipe after another fashion. How, cried the mayor, do you think I brook Being worse treated than a cook, Insulted by a lazy ribald, With idle pipe and vesture piebald? You threaten us, fellow, do your worst, Blow your pipe there till you burst. Once more he stepped into the street, And to his lips again, Laid his long pipe of smooth straight cane, And ere he blew three notes, Such sweet soft notes, As yet musicians cunning, Never gave the enraptured air. There was a rustling, That seemed like a bustling, Of merry crowds jostling, At pitching and hustling. Small feet were pattering, Wooden shoes clattering, Little hands clapping, And little tongues chattering, And, like fowls in a farmyard Where barley is scattering, Out came the children running. All the little boys and girls, With rosy cheeks and flaxen curls, And sparkling eyes, And teeth like pearls, Tripping and skipping, Ran merrily after The wonderful music, With shouting and laughter. The mare was dumb, and the council stood, as if they were changed into blocks of wood, unable to move a step or cry to the children merrily skipping by, and could only follow with the eye that joyous crowd at the piper's back. But how the mare was on the rack, and the wretched council's bosoms beat as the piper turned from the high street to where the vaser rolled its waters right in the way of their sons and daughters. However, he turned from south to west, and at Coppelberg Hill his steps addressed. And after him the children pressed, great was the joy in every breast. He never can cross that mighty top, he's forced to let the piping drop, and we shall see our children stop. When lo, as they reached the mountainside, a wondrous portal opened wide, as if a cavern was suddenly hollowed, and the piper advanced, and the children followed. And when all were in to the very last, the door in the mountainside shut fast. Did I say all? No, one was lame, and could not dance the whole of the way. And in after years, if you would blame his sadness, he used to say, It's dull in our town, since my playmates left. I can't forget that I am bereft of all the pleasant sights they see, which the piper also promised me. For he led us, he said, to a joyous land, joining the town, and just at hand, where waters gushed, and fruit trees grew, and flowers put forth a fairer hue, and everything was strange and new. The sparrows were brighter than peacocks here, and their dogs outran our fallow deer. And honeybees had lost their stings, and horses were born with eagle's wings. And just as I became assured, my lame foot would be speedily cured, the music stopped, and I stood still, and found myself outside the hill, left alone against my will, to go now limping as before, and never hear of that country more. Alas, alas for Hamelin! There came into many a burgher's pate, a text which says that heaven's gate opes to the rich at as easy rate as the needle's eye takes a camel in. The mare sent east, west, north and south to offer the piper by word of mouth wherever it was men's lot to find him, silver and gold to his heart's content, if he'd only return the way he went and bring the children behind him. But when they saw it was a lost endeavour, and piper and dancers were gone for ever. They made a decree that lawyers never should think their records dated duly 
if after the day of the month and year these words did not as well appear. And so long after what happened here, on the 22nd of July, 1376, and the better in memory to fix the place of the children's last retreat, they called it the Pied Piper Street, where anyone playing on pipe or tabor was sure for the future to lose his labour, nor suffered they hostelry or tavern to shock with mirth a street so solemn, but opposite the place of the cavern they wrote the story on a column, and on the great church window painted the same to make the world acquainted how their children were stolen away, and there it stands to this very day. And I must not omit to say that in Transylvania there's a tribe of alien people who ascribe the outlandish ways and dress on which their neighbours lay such stress to their fathers and mothers having risen out of some subterraneous prison into which they were trepanned long time ago in a mighty band out of Hamlin town in Brunswick land. But how or why they don't understand so, Willie, let me and you be wipers of scores out with all men, especially pipers. And whether they pipe us free from rats or from mice, if we've promised them aught, let us keep our promise. End of section 32. This recording is in the public domain. Section 33 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Rosehip. Time, You Old Gypsy Man by Ralph Hodgson. Time, you old gypsy man, will you not stay? Put up your caravan just for one day. All things I'll give you, will you be my guest? Bells for your jennet of silver the best. Goldsmiths shall beat you a great golden ring. Peacocks shall bow to you, little boys sing. Oh, and sweet girls will festoon you with May. Time, you old gypsy, why hasten away? Last week in Babylon, last night in Rome, Morning, and in the crush under Paul's dome, under Paul's dial, you tighten your rein. Only a moment, and off once again. Off to some city, now blind in the womb, off to another, ere that's in the tomb. Time, you old gypsy man, will you not stay? Put up your caravan just for one day. End of section 33. This recording is in the public domain. Section 34 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale, recorded for LibriVox.org by Ian King. The Solitary Reaper by William Wordsworth. Behold her, single in the field, yon solitary highland lass, Reaping and singing by herself. Stop here, or gently pass. Alone she cuts and binds the grain, And sings a melancholy strain. Oh, listen, for the veil profound Is overflowing with the sound. No nightingale did ever chaunt More welcome notes to weary bands Of travellers in some shady haunt Among Arabian sands. A voice so thrilling ne'er was heard in springtime from the cuckoo bird, breaking the silence of the seas among the farthest Hebrides. Will no one tell me what she sings? Perhaps the plaintive numbers flow for old, unhappy, far off things and battles long ago. Or is it some more humble lay, familiar matter of today, some natural sorrow, loss, or pain? That has been and may be again. Whate'er the theme, the maiden sang as if her song could have no ending. I saw her singing at her work and o'er the sickle bending. I listened motionless and still 
And as I mounted up the hill, the music in my heart I bore, long after it was heard no more. End of section 34. This recording is in the public domain. Section 35 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale, recorded for LibriVox.org by Ian King. My Lost Youth by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Often I think of the beautiful town that is seated by the sea. Often in thought go up and down the pleasant streets of that dear old town, and my youth comes back to me. And a verse of a Lapland song is haunting my memory still. A boy's will is the wind's will, and the thoughts of youth are long, long thoughts. I can see the shadowy lines of its trees, and catch, in sudden gleams, the sheen of the far surrounding seas, and islands that were the Hesperides of all my boyish dreams. And the burden of that old song it murmurs and whispers still. A boy's will is the wind's will, and the thoughts of youth are long, long thoughts. I remember the black wharves and the slips, and the sea tides tossing free, and Spanish sailors with bearded lips, and the beauty and mystery of the ships, and the magic of the sea, and the voice of that wayward song is singing and saying still, a boy's will is the wind's will, and the thoughts of youth are long, long thoughts. I remember the bulwarks by the shore, and the fort upon the hill, the sunrise gun with its hollow roar, the drum beat repeated o'er and o'er, and the bugle wild and shrill, and the music of that old song throbs in my memory still. A boy's will is the wind's will, and the thoughts of youth are long, long thoughts. I remember the sea fight far away, how it thundered o'er the tide, and the dead captains as they lay in their graves, o'erlooking the tranquil bay where they in battle died. And the sound of that mournful song goes through me with a thrill. A boy's will is the wind's will, and the thoughts of youth are long, long thoughts. I can see the breezy dome of groves, the shadows of Deering's woods, and the friendships old, and the early loves, come back with a Sabbath sound as of doves in quiet neighbourhoods. And the verse of that sweet old song, it flutters and murmurs still. A boy's will is the wind's will, and the thoughts of youth are long, long thoughts. I remember the gleams and glooms that dart across the schoolboy's brain, the song and the silence in the heart, that in part are prophecies, and in part are longings wild and vain. And the voice of that fitful song sings on and is never still. A boy's will is the wind's will, and the thoughts of youth are long, long thoughts. End of section 35. This recording is in the public domain. Section 36 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Kangaroo. Battle Hymn of the Republic by Julia Ward Howe. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage, where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the fateful lighting of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. I have seen him in the watchfires of a hundred circling camps. They have builded him an altar in the evening dews and damps. I can read his righteous sentence by the dim and flaring lamps. His day is marching on. I have read a fiery gospel, writ in burnished rows of steel, as ye deal 
with my contemners, so with you my grace shall deal. Let the hero, born of woman, crush the serpent with his heel, since God is marching on. He has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never call retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. O oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea, with the glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us die to make men free, while God is marching on. End of section 36. This recording is in the public domain. Section 37 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale, recorded for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Gathering Song of Donald Dew by Sir Walter Scott Pibroch of Dunwill Dew, Pibroch of Dunwill, wake thy wild voice anew, summon Clan Conwill. Come away, come away, hark to the summons, come in your war array, gentles and commons. Come from deep glen and from mountains so rocky, the war pipe and pennon are at Inverlochy. Come every hill plate and true heart that wears one, come every steel blade and strong heart that bears one. Leave untended the herd, the flock without shelter, leave the corpse uninterred, the bride at the altar, leave the deer, leave the steer, leave nets and barges, come with your fighting gear broadswords and targes come as the winds come when forests are rended come as the waves come when navies are stranded faster come faster come faster and faster chief vessel page and groom tenant and master fast they come fast they come see how they gather wide waves the eagle plume blended with heather Cast your plates, draw your blades, forward each man set. Pibroch of Dun will do. Knell for the onset. End of section 37. This recording is in the public domain. Section 38 of Rainbow Gold Poems Old and New Selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Kangaroo The Minstrel Boy by Thomas Moore The minstrel boy to the war is gone, In the ranks of death you'll find him. His father's sword he has girded on, And his wild harp slung behind him. Lands of song, said the warrior bard, Though all the world betrays thee, one sword at least thy rights shall guard, One faithful harp shall praise thee. The minstrel fell, but the foeman's chain Could not bring his proud soul under. The harp he loved ne'er spoke again, For he tore its cords asunder, And said, No chains shall sully thee, Thou soul of love and bravery. Thy songs were made for the brave and free, they shall never sound in slavery. End of section 38 Section 39 of Rainbow Gold Poems Old and New Selected by Sarah Teasdale Recorded for LibriVox.org by Sonia Bannockburn, Robert Bruce's Address to His Army by Robert Burns. Scots, wha ha with Wallace bled, Scots, whom Bruce has affen led, welcome to your gory bed or to glorious victory. Now's the day and now's the hour. See the front of battle lower. See approach proud Edward's power. Edward, chains and slavery. Who will be a traitor knave? Who can fill a coward's grave? Who so base as be a slave? 
traitor, coward, turn and flee. Who for Scotland's king and law freedom's sword will strongly draw, free men stand or free men fall. Caledonian, on with me. By oppression's woes and pains, by your sons in servile chains, we will drain our dearest veins, but they shall, they shall be free. Lay the proud usurpers low, tyrants fall in every foe, liberties in every blow. Forward, let us do or die. End of section 39. This recording is in the public domain. Section 40 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale, recorded for LibriVox.org, by Betty B. Fable The mountain and the squirrel had a quarrel, and the former called the latter Little Prig. Bun replied, You are doubtless very big, but all sorts of things and weather must be taken in together to make up a year and a sphere and i think it no disgrace to occupy my place if i'm not so large as you you are not so small as i and not half so spry i'll not deny you make a very pretty squirrel track talents differ all is well and wisely put if i cannot carry forests on my back neither can you crack a nut ralph waldo emerson end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Section 41 of Rainbow Gold Poems Old and New Selected by Sarah Teasdale Recorded for LibriVox.org by Rosehip Good Hours by Robert Frost I had for my winter evening walk no one at all with whom to talk but i had the cottages in a row up to their shining eyes in snow and i thought i had the folk within i had the sound of a violin i had a glimpse through curtain laces of youthful forms and youthful faces i had such company outward bound i went till there were no cottages found I turned and repented, but coming back I saw no window but that was black. Over the snow my creaking feet disturbed the slumbering village street like profanation, by your leave, at ten o'clock of a winter eve. End of section 41. This recording is in the public domain. Section 42 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, Selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Kangaroo. Winter by William Shakespeare When icicles hang by the wall, And Dick the shepherd blows his nail, And Tom bears logs into the hall, And milk comes frozen home in pail, When blood is nipped, and ways be foul, the nightly sings the staring owl. To who, to hit, to who, a merry note, while greasy Joan doth kill the pot. When all around the wind doth blow, and coughing drowns the parson's saw, and birds sit brooding in the snow, and Marian's nose looks red and raw. When roasted crabs hiss in the bowl, the nightly sings the staring owl. To who? To hit. To who? A merry note. While greasy Joan doth keel the pot. End of section 42. This recording is in the public domain. Section 43 of rainbow gold poems old and new selected by sarah teasdale recorded for LibriVox.org by kathleen a chanted calendar 
first came the primrose on the bank high like a maiden looking forth from the window of a tower when the battle rose below so looked she and saw the storms go by then came the wind flower in the valley left behind as a wounded maiden pale with purple streaks of woe when the battle has rolled by wanders to and fro so tottered she dishevelled in the wind then came the daisies on the first of may like a bannered show's advance while the crowd runs by the way with ten thousand flowers about them they came trooping through the fields as a happy people come so came they as a happy people come when the war has rolled away with dance and tabor pipe and drum and all make holiday then came the cowslip like a dancer in the fair she spread her little mat of green and on it danced she with a fillet bound about her brow a fillet round her happy brow a golden fillet round her brow and rubies in her hair by sydney dubell end of section forty three this recording is in the public domain section forty four of rainbow gold poems old and new selected by sarah teasdale recorded for LibriVox org by kathleen the cloud i bring fresh showers for the thirsting flowers from the seas and the streams i bear light shade for the leaves when laid in their noonday dreams from my wings are shaken the dews that waken the sweet buds every one when rocked to rest on their mother's breast as she dances about the sun i wield the flail of the lashing hail and whiten the green plains under and then again i dissolve it in rain and laugh as i pass in thunder i sift the snow on the mountains below and their great pines groan aghast and all the night tis my pillow white while i sleep in the arms of the blast sublime on the towers of my skyey bowers lightning my pilot sits in a cavern under is fretted the thunder it struggles and howls at fits over earth and ocean with gentle motion this pilot is guiding me lured by the love of the genie that move in the depths of the purple sea over the rills and the crags and the hills over the lakes and the plains wherever he dream under mountain or stream the spirit he loves remains and i all the while bask in heaven's blue smile whilst he is dissolving in rains the sanguine sunrise with his meteor eyes and his burning plumes outspread leaps on the back of my sailing rack when the morning star shines dead as on the jag of a mountain crag which an earthquake rocks and swings an eagle alit one moment may sit in the light of its golden wings and when sunset may breathe from the lit sea beneath its ardors of rest and of love and the crimson pall of eve may fall from the depth of heaven above with wings folded i rest on mine airy nest as still as a brooding dove that orbed maiden with white fire laden whom mortals call the moon glides glimmering o'er my fleece-like floor by the midnight breezes strewn and wherever the beat of her unseen feet which only the angels hear may have broken the woof of my tent's thin roof the stars peep behind her and peer and i laugh to see them whirl and flee like a swarm of golden bees when i widen the rent in my wind-built tent till the calm rivers lakes and seas like strips of the sky fallen through me on high are each paved with the moon and these i bind the sun's throne with a burning zone and the moon's with a girdle of pearl the volcanoes are dim and the stars reel and swim when the whirlwinds my banner unfurl from cape to cape with a bridge-like shape over a torrent sea sunbeam proof i hang like a roof the mountains its columns be the triumphal arch through which i march with hurricane fire and snow when the powers of the air are chained to my chair is the million-colored bow the sphere fire above its soft colors wove while the moist earth was laughing below i am the daughter of earth and water and the nursling of the sky i pass through the pores of the ocean and shores i change but i cannot die for after the rain 
when with never a stain the pavilion of heaven is bare and the winds and sunbeams with their convex gleams build up the blue dome of air i silently laugh at my own cenotaph and out of the caverns of rain like a child from the womb like a ghost from the tomb i arise and unbuild it again by percy bysshe shelley end of section forty four this recording is in the public domain section forty five of rainbow gold poems old and new selected by sarah teasdale recorded for laborbox dot org by kathleen bugle song the splendor falls on castle walls and snowy summits old in story the long light shakes across the lakes and the wild cataract leaps in glory blow bugle blow set the wild echoes flying blow bugle answer echoes dying 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 o oh, hark o oh, hear how thin and clear and thinner clearer farther going o oh, sweet and far from cliff and scar the horns of elfland faintly blowing blow let us hear the purple glens replying blow bugle answer echoes dying 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 o oh, love they die in yon rich sky they faint on hill or field or river our echoes roll from soul to soul and grow for ever and for ever blow bugle blow set the wild echoes flying and answer echoes answer dying 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 by alfred tennyson end of section forty five this recording is in the public domain section forty six of rainbow gold poems old and new selected by sarah teasdale recorded for librivox dot org by kathleen the forsaken mermaid come dear children let us away down and away below now my brothers call from the bay now the great wind shoreward blow now the salt tide seaward flow now the wild white horses play champ and chafe and toss in the spray children dear let us away this way this way call her once before you go call once yet in a voice that she will know margaret margaret children's voices should be dear call once more to a mother's ear children's voices wild with pain surely she will come again call her once and come away this way this way mother dear we cannot stay the wild white horses foam and fret margaret margaret come dear children come away down call no more one last look at the white walled town and the little gray church on the windy shore then come down she will not come though you call all day come away come away children dear was it yesterday we heard the sweet bells over the bay in the caverns where we lay through the surf and through the swell the far-off sound of a silver bell sand strewn caverns cool and deep where the winds are all asleep where the spent lights quiver and gleam where the salt weed sways in the stream where the sea beasts ranged all round feed in the ooze of their pasture ground where the sea snakes coil and twine dry their mail and bask in the brine where great whales come sailing by sail and sail with unshut eye round the world for ever and i when did music come this way children dear was it yesterday call yet once that she went away once she sat with you and me on a red gold throne in the heart of the sea and the youngest sat on her knee she combed its bright hair and she tended it well when down swung the sound of the far-off bell she sighed she looked up through the clear green sea she said i must go for my kinfolks pray in the little gray church on the shore to-day twill be easter time in the world ah me and i lose my poor soul merman here with thee i said go up dear heart through the waves say thy prayer and come back to the kind sea caves she smiled as she went up through the surf in the bay children dear was it yesterday children dear were we long alone the sea grows stormy the little ones moan long prayers i said in the world they say come i said and we rose through the surf in the bay 
we went up the beach by the sandy down where the sea stocks bloom to the white walled town through the narrow paved streets where all was still to the little gray church on the windy hill from the church came a murmur of folk at prayers but we stood without in the cold blowing airs we climbed on the graves on the stones worn with rains and we gazed up the aisle through the small leaded panes she sat by the pillar we saw her clear margaret hiss, come quick we are here dear heart i said we are long alone the sea grows stormy the little ones moan but ah she gave me never a look for her eyes were sealed to the holy book loud prays the priest shut stands the door come away children call no more come away come down call no more down 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 to the depths of the sea she sits at her wheel in the humming town singing most joyfully hark what she sings o oh joy o oh joy for the humming street and the child with its toy for the priest and the bell and the holy well for the wheel where i spun and the blessed light of the sun and so she sings her fill singing most joyfully till the spindle drops from her hand and the whizzing wheel stands still she steals to the window and looks at the sand and over the sand at the sea and her eyes are set in a stare and anon where breaks a sigh and anon there drops a tear from a sorrow clouded eye and a heart sorrow laden a long long sigh for the cold strange eyes of a little mermaiden and the gleam of her golden hair come away away children come children come down the hoarse wind blows coldly lights shine in the town she will start from her slumber when gusts shake the door she will hear the winds howling will hear the waves roar we shall see while above us the waves roar and whirl a ceiling of amber a pavement of pearl singing here came a mortal but faithless was she and alone dwell for ever the kings of the sea but children at midnight when soft the winds blow when clear falls the moonlight when spring tides are low when sweet airs come seaward from heaths starred with brooms and high rocks throw mildly on the blanched sands a gloom up the still glistening beaches up the creeks we will hie over banks of bright seaweed the ebb tide leaves dry we will gaze from the sand hills at the white sleeping town at the church on the hillside and then come back down singing there dwells a loved one but cruel is she she left lonely for ever the kings of the sea by matthew arnold end of section forty six this recording is in the public domain Section 47 of Rainbow Gold Poems Old and New Selected by Sarah Teasdale Recorded for LibriVox.org by Kathleen Nurse's Song When the voices of children are heard on the green And laughing is heard on the hill My heart is at rest within my breast And everything else is still Then come home, my children The sun has gone down And the dews of night arise Come, come, leave off play and let us away till the morning appears in the skies no no let us play for it is yet day and we cannot go to sleep besides in the sky the little birds fly and the hills are all covered with sheep well well go and play till the light fades away and then go home to bed the little ones leaped and shouted and laughed and all the hills echoed by william blake this recording is in the public domain Section 48 of Rainbow Gold Poems Old and New Selected by Sarah Teasdale Recorded for LibriVox.org by Kathleen To a Mouse On Turning Up Her Nest with the Plow November 1785 We, sleek it, cowrin, timorous beastie Oh, what a panic's in thy breastie Thou need na sorrow wa say hasty We bickering brattle I wad be lathe to rin and chase thee we murdering paddle i'm truly sorry man's dominion has broken nature's social union and justifies that ill opinion which makes the startle at me thy poor earth-born companion and fellow mortal i doubt na whiles but thou may thieve what then 
poor beastie thou maun live a daemon icker in a thrave s a small request i'll get a blessin wi the lave and never miss thee thy wee bit housey too in ruin it's silly was the winds are strewin and naething now to big a new an o foggage green and bleak december's win ensuing baith smell and keen thou saw the fields laid bare and waste and weary winter comin fast and cosy here beneath the blast thou thought to dwell till crash the cruel coulter passed out through thy cell that wee bit heap o leaves and stipple has cost thee money a weary nibble now thou's turned out for a uh, thy trouble but house or hauled to thole the winter's sleety dribble and cranrook called but mousy thou art no thy lane in proving foresight may be vain the best laid schemes o mice and men gang aff a glee and lay ye us not but grief and pain for promised joy still thou art blessed compared we me the present only toucheth thee but ouch i backward cast my e on prospects drear and forward though i cannot see i guess and fear by robert burns end of section forty eight this recording is in the public domain Section 49 of Rainbow Gold, Poems All and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale, recorded for LibriVox.org by Effia Tora. The Fairies by William Ellingham Up the airy mountain, down the rushy glen, we daren't go a-hunting for fear of little men. We folk, good folk, trooping all together, green jacket, red cap, and white owl's feather down along the rocky shore some make their home they live on crispy pancakes of yellow tide foam some in the reeds of the black mountain lake with frogs for their watchdogs all night awake high on the hilltop the old king sits he is now so old and grey he's nigh lost his wits with a bridge of white mist, Column Kill he crosses on his stately journeys from Slivlick to Rosses. Or going up with music on cold starry nights to sup with the queen of the gay northern lights. They stole little Bridget for seven years long. When she came down again, her friends were all gone. They took her lightly back between the night and morrow, they thought that she was fast asleep, but she was dead with sorrow. They have kept her ever since, deep within the lake, on a bed of flagged leaves, watching till she wake. By the craggy hillside, through the mosses bare, they have planted thorn trees for pleasure here and there. If any man so daring, as dig them up in spite, he shall find their sharpest thorns in his bait at night. Up the airy mountain, down the rushy glen, we daren't go a hunting for fear of little men. We folk, good folk, trooping all together, green jacket, red cap, and white owl's feather. End of section 49. This recording is in the public domain. Section 50 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale, recorded for LibriVox.org by Rosehip. La Belle Dame Sans Merci by John Keats. Oh, what can ail thee, knight at arms, alone and palely loitering? The sedge has withered from the lake, and no birds sing. Oh, what can ail thee, knight at arms, so haggard and so woebegone? The squirrel's granary is full, and the harvest's done. I see a lily on thy brow, 
With anguish moist and fever dew, And on thy cheeks a fading rose Fast withereth too. I met a lady in the meads, Full beautiful, a fairy's child. Her hair was long, her foot was light, And her eyes were wild. I made a garland for her head, And bracelets too, and fragrant zone. She looked at me as she did love, And made sweet moan. I set her on my pacing steed, And nothing else saw all day long. For sideways would she bend, And sing a fairy's song. She found me roots of relish sweet, And honey wild and manna dew, And sure in language strange she said, I love thee true. She took me to her elfin grot, And there she wept and sighed full sore, And there I shut her wild, wild eyes With kisses for. And there she lulled me asleep, and there I dreamed. Ah, woe betide, the latest dream I ever dreamed on the cold hill's side. I saw pale kings and princes too, pale warriors, death pale were they all. They cried, La belle dame sans merci hath thee in thrall. I saw their starved lips in the gloam, With horrid warning gaped wide, And I awoke and found me here On the cold hill's side. And this is why I sojourn here, Alone and palely loitering, Though the sedge is withered from the lake, And no birds sing. End of section 50. This recording is in the public domain. Section 51 of Rainbow Gold Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Kangaroo. Spring by Thomas Nash. Spring, the sweet spring, is the year's pleasant king. Then blooms each thing, the maids dance in a ring. Curl doth not sting, the pretty birds do sing. Kaku, jug jug, poe, to witawoo. Palm and may make country houses gay. Lambs frisk and play, the shepherds pipe all day. And we hear I, birds tune this merry lay. Kaku, jig jug, poe, to witawoo. The fields breathe sweet, the daisies kiss our feet, young lovers meet, old wives a sunning sit. In every street, these tunes our ears do greet. Kaku, jig jug, poe, to witawoo. Spring, the sweet spring. End of section 51. This recording is in the public domain. Section 52 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Kangaroo. I Wandered Lonely by William Wordsworth I wandered lonely as a cloud That floats on high o'er vales and hills, When all at once I saw a crowd, A host of golden daffodils, Beside the lake beneath the trees, Fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Continuous as the stars that shine And twinkle on the milky way, They stretched in never-ending line Along the margin of a bay, Ten thousand saw I at a glance, Tossing their heads in sprightly dance. The waves beside them danced, But they, 
outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not but be gay in such a jocund company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. For oft, when on my couch I lie, in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude, and then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. End of section 52. This recording is in the public domain. Section 53 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, Selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Betty B. The Gay Goshawk. Oh, well is me, my gay goshawk, that you can speak and flee, for you can carry a love letter to my true love, Fray Me. Oh, how can I carry a letter to her, or how should I let her know? I bear a tongue near we her spake, and eyes that near her saw. The white o' oh, my love skin is white, as down o' oh, dove or maw. The red o' oh, my love's cheek is red, as blood that's spilt on snaw. When ye come to the castle, light on the tree of ash, and sit ye there and sing our loves as she comes fray the mass. Four and twenty fair ladies will to the mass repair, and we'll may ye my lady ken the fairest lady there. When the goshawk flew to that castle, he lighted on the ash, and there he sat and sang their loves as she came fray the mass. Stay where you be, my maidens, a, eh, and sip red wine anon, till I go to my west window and hear a birdie's moan. She's gain unto her west window, the bolt she fainly drew, and unto that lady's white, white neck the bird a letter threw. You're bidden to send your love a send, for he has sent you twa and tell him where he may see you soon, or he cannot live a va. I send him the ring from my finger, the garland off my hair. I send him the heart that's in my breast, what would my love have mare? And at the fourth kirk in fair Scotland, you'll bid him wait for me there. She hied to her father dear, as fast as gang could she. I'm sick at the heart, my father dear, and asking grant you me ask ye na for that scottish lord for him you'll never see and asking and asking dear father she says and asking grant you me that if i die in fair england in scotland you'll bury me at the first kirk o fair scotland ye cause the bells be rung at the second kirk o fair scotland ye cause the mass be sung at the third kirk o fair scotland ye deal gold for my sake at the fourth kirk o fair scotland oh there you'll bury me at this is all my asking father i pray ye grant it to me your asking is but small he said we'll grant it it shall be but why do ye talk of such like things for ye arena gonna die the ladies gained to her chamber and a moanful woman was she as gin she had taken a sudden brash and were about to dee the ladies gained to her chamber as fast as she could fare and she has drunk a sleepy draught she mixed with mickle care she's fallen into a heavy trance and pale and cold was she she seemed to be as surely dead as any corpse could be out and spake an old witch-wife at the fireside said she gin she has killed herself for love i wot it weel may be but drap that het laid on her cheek and drap it on her chin and drap it on her bosom white and she'll maybe speak again "'Tis much that a young lady will do to her true love to win. "'They drapped the het lid on her cheek, they drapped it on her chin. "'They drapped it on her bosom white, but she spake none again. "'Her brothers they went to a room to make to her a beer. "'The boards were o' oh, a cedar wood, the edges o' oh, silver clear. "'Her sisters they went to a room to make to her a sark. "'The cloth was a or the satin fine, and the stitching silken work now well is me my gay goshawk that ye can speak and flee come show me any love tokens that ye have brought to me she sends ye her ring fray her finger white the garland fray her hair she sends ye the heart within her breast and what would ye have mare 
and at the fourth kirk o fair scotland she bid ye wait for her there come hither all my merry young men and drink the good red wine for we must on towards fair england to free my love frae pine the funeral came into fair scotland and they gart the bells be rung and when it came to the second kirk they gart the mass be sung and when it came to the third kirk they dealt gold for her sake and when it came to the fourth kirk her love was waiting thereat at the fourth kirk in fair scotland stood spearmen in a row and up and started her ain true love the chieftain over them a set down set down the beer he says till i look upon the dead the last time that i saw her face its color was warm and red he stripped the sheet from off her face a little below the chin the lady then she opened her eyes and looked full on him o oh, give me a shiv o oh, your bread love o oh, give me a cup o oh, your wine long have i fasted for your sake and now i fain would dine ge hame ge hame, my seven brothers ge hame and blow the horn and ye may say that ye sought my scathe and that i had given ye the scorn i came not here to bonnie scotland to lie down in the clay but i came here to bonnie scotland to wear the silk say gay i came na here to bonnie scotland among the dead to rest but i came here to bonnie scotland to the man that i love best author unknown end of section fifty three section fifty four of rainbow gold poems old and new selected by sarah teasdale recorded for librivox dot org by betty b an old song of fairies come follow follow me you fairy elves that be which circle on the green come follow mab your queen hand in hand let's dance around for this place is fairy ground when mortals are at rest and snoring in their nest unheard and unespied through keyholes we do glide over tails stools and shelves we trip it with our fairy elves and if the house be foul with platter dish or bowl upstairs we nimbly creep and find the sluts asleep there we pinch their arms and thighs none escapes nor none espies but if the house be swept and from uncleanness kept we praise the household maid and duly she is paid for we use before we go to drop a tester in her shoe upon a mushroom's head our tablecloth we spread a grain of rye or wheat is manchet which we eat pearly drops of dew we drink in acorn cups filled to the brink the brains of nightingales with unctuous fat of snails between two cockles stewed is meat that's easily chewed tails of worms and marrow of mice do make a dish that's wondrous nice the grasshopper gnat and fly serve for our minstrelsy grace said we dance a while and so the time beguile and if the moon doth hide her head the glow-worm lights us home to bed on tops of dewy grass so nimbly do we pass the young and tender stalk ne'er bends when we do walk yet in the morning may be seen where we the night before have been author unknown end of poem this recording is in the public domain section fifty five of rainbow gold poems old and new selected by sarah teasdale Recorded for LibriVox.org by Rosehip Moon Folly, The Song of Con the Fool By Fanny Stearns Gifford I will go up the mountain after the moon. She is caught in a dead fir tree, Like a great pale apple of silver and pearl, Like a great pale apple is she i will leap and will catch her with quick cold hands and carry her home in my sack i will set her down safe on the oaken bench that stands at the chimney back and then i will sit by the fire all night 
and sit by the fire all day. I will gnaw at the moon to my heart's delight till I gnaw her slowly away. And while I grow mad with the moon's cold taste, the world will beat at my door crying, Come out! and crying, Make haste and give us the moon once more. But I shall not answer them ever at all. I shall laugh as I count and hide the great black beautiful seeds of the moon in a flower pot deep and wide. Then I shall lie down and go fast asleep, drunken with flame and a swoon, but the seeds will sprout, and the seeds will leap the subtle swift seeds of the moon. And some day, all of the world that cries and beats at my door shall see a thousand moon leaves spring from my thatch on a wonderful white moon tree. Then each shall have moons to his heart's desire, apples of silver and pearl, apples of orange and copper fire setting his five wits a swirl. And then they will thank me, who mock me now, Wanting the moon, is he? Oh, I'm off to the mountain after the moon, ere she falls from the dead fir tree. End of section 55. This recording is in the public domain. Section 56 of Rainbow Gold Poems Old and New. Selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Betty B. Star Talk. Are you awake, Jamelli, this frosty night? We'll be awake till Reveille, which is sunrise, says the Jamelli. It's no good trying to go to sleep. If there's wine to be got, we'll drink it deep. But sleep is gone for tonight. But sleep is gone for tonight. Are you cold too, poor Pleiads, this frosty night? Yes and so are the hyads see us cuddle and hug say the pleiads all six in a ring it keeps us warm we huddle together like birds in a storm it's bitter weather to-night it's bitter weather to-night what do you hunt orion this starry night the ram the bull and the lion and the great bear says orion with my starry quiver and beautiful belt i am trying to find a good thick pelt to warm my shoulders to-night to warm my shoulders to-night did you hear that great she-bear this frosty night yes he's talking of stripping me bare of my own big fur says the she-bear i'm afraid of the man and his terrible arrow the thought of it chills my bones to the marrow and the frost so cruel to-night and the frost so cruel to-night how is your trade aquarius this frosty night complaints is many and various and my feet are cold says aquarius there's venus objects to dolphin scales and mars to crab spawn found in my pails and the pump has frozen to-night and the pump has frozen to-night robert graves end of section fifty six this recording is in the public domain Section 57 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, Selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Betty B. Jim J. Do diddle de do, poor Jim J. Got stuck fast in yesterday. Squinting he was on cross legs bent, never heeding the wind was spent. Round veered the weathercock, the sun drew in, and stuck was Jim like a rusty pin. We pulled and we pulled from seven till twelve, Jim too frightened to help himself. But all in vain the clock struck one, and there was Jim a little bit gone. At half past five you scarce could see a glimpse of his flapping handkerchief. And when came noon and we climbed sky high, Jim was a speck slip slipping by. Come tomorrow, the neighbors say, he'll be past crying for poor Jim Jay. Walter de la Mare. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
Section 58 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, Selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Betty B. The Ghosts of the Buffaloes Last night at black midnight I woke with a cry. The windows were shaking, there was thunder on high. The floor was a tremble, the door was ajar. White fires, crimson fires shone from afar. I rushed to the dooryard, the city was gone. My home was a hut without orchard or lawn. It was mud smear and logs near a whispering stream. Nothing else built by man could I see in my dream. Then ghost kings came headlong, row upon row, gods of the Indians, torches aglow. They mounted the bear and the elk and the deer, and eagles gigantic, aged and seer. They rode longhorn cattle, they cried a la la they lifted the knife the bow and the spear they lifted ghost torches from dead fires below the midnight made grand with the cry a la la the midnight made grand with a red god charge a red god show a red god show a la la a la la a la la a la la with bodies like bronze and terrible eyes came the rank and the file with catamount cries gibbering yipping with hollow skull clacks riding white broncos with skeleton backs scalp hunters beaded and spangled and bad naked and lustful and foaming and mad flashing primeval demoniac scorn bloodthirst and pomp amid darkness reborn power and glory that sleep in the grass while the winds and the snows and the great rains pass they cross the gray river thousands abreast they rode in infinite lines to the west tide upon tide of strange fury and foam spirits and wraiths the blue was their home the sky was their goal where the star flags are furled and on past those far golden splendors they whirled they burned to dim meteors lost in the deep and i turned in dazed wonder thinking of sleep and the wind crept by alone unkempt unsatisfied the wind cried and cried muttered of massacres long past buffaloes in shambles vast an owl said hark what is a wing i heard a cricket caroling i heard a cricket caroling i heard a cricket caroling then snuffing the lightning that crashed from on high rose royal old buffaloes row upon row the lords of the prairie came galloping by and i cried in my heart a la la a la la a red god show a red god show a la la a la la a la la a la la buffaloes buffaloes thousands abreast a scourge in amazement they swept to the west with black bobbing noses with red rolling tongues coughing forth steam from their leather wrapped lungs cows with their calves bulls big and vain goring the laggards shaking the mane stamping flint feet flashing moon eyes pompous and owlish shaggy and wise like sea cliffs and caves resounded their ranks with shoulders like waves and undulant flanks tide upon tide of strange fury and foam spirits and wraiths the blue was their home the sky was their goal where the star flags are furled and on past those far golden splendors they whirled they burned to dim meteors lost in the deep and i turned in dazed wonder thinking of sleep i heard a cricket's cymbals play a scarecrow lightly flapped his rags and a pan that hung by his shoulder rang rattled and thumped in a listless way and now the wind in the chimney sang the wind in the chimney the wind in the chimney the wind in the chimney seemed to say dream boy dream if you anywise can to dream is the work of beast or man life is the west going dream storm's breath life is a dream the sigh of the skies the breath of the stars that nod on their pillows with their golden hair must over their eyes the locust played on his musical wing sang to his mate of love's delight i heard the whippoorwill's soft fret i heard a cricket caroling i heard a cricket caroling i heard a cricket say good night good night good night good night good night vachel lindsay
End of section 58. This recording is in the public domain. Section 59 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale, recorded for LibriVox.org, by Larry Wilson. A Christmas Carol by Christina Rossetti In the bleak midwinter frosty wind made moan, earth stood hard as iron, water like a stone. Snow had fallen, snow on snow, snow on snow, in the bleak midwinter long ago. Our God, heaven cannot hold him, nor earth sustain. Heaven and earth shall flee away when he comes to reign. In the bleak midwinter a stable place sufficed, the Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ. Enough for him, whom cherubim worship night and day, a breast full of milk and a manger full of hay. Enough for him, whom angels fall down before, the ox and ass and camel which adore. Angels and archangels may have gathered there, cherubim and seraphim thronged the air, but only his mother, in her maiden bliss, worshipped the beloved with a kiss. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what I can, I give him. Give my heart. End of section 59. This recording is in the public domain. Section 60 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Evan Smith. Escape at Bedtime by Robert Louis Stevenson. The lights from the parlor and kitchen shone out, through the blinds and the windows and bars, and high overhead and all moving about, there were thousands of millions of stars. There ne'er were such thousands of leaves on a tree, nor of people in church or the park, as the crowds of the stars that looked down upon me, and that glittered and winked in the dark. The dog and the plow and the hunter and all, and the stars of the sailor and Mars, these shone in the sky, and the pail by the wall would be half full of water and stars. They saw me at last, and they chased me with cries, and they soon had me packed into bed. But the glory kept shining and bright in my eyes, and the stars going round in my head. End of section 60. This recording is in the public domain. Section 61 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Rosehip. Song of the Chattahoochee by Sidney Lanier. Out of the hills of Habersham, down the valleys of Hall, I hurry amain to reach the plain, run the rapid and leap the fall. Split at the rock and together again, Accept my bed, or narrow or wide, And flee from folly on every side, With a lover's pain to attain the plain, Far from the hills of Habersham, Far from the valleys of Hall. All down the hills of Habersham, All through the valleys of Hall, The rushes cried, Abide, abide, the wilful water-weeds held me thrall, The laving laurel turned my tide, The ferns and the fondling grass said stay, The dewberry dipped for to work delay, And the little reeds sighed, Abide, abide, Here in the hills of Habersham, Here in the valleys of Hall. High o'er the hills of Habersham, Veiling the valleys of Hall, the hickory told me manifold fair tales of shade, The poplar tall wrought me her shadowy self to hold. The chestnut, the oak, the walnut, the pine, Overleaning with flickering meaning and sign, Said, pass not so cold these manifold deep shades Of the hills of Habersham, these glades, in the valleys of Hall. 
and oft in the hills of Habersham, and oft in the valleys of Hall, the white quartz shone, and the smooth brookstone did bar me of passage with friendly brawl, and many a luminous jewel lone, crystals clear, or a cloud with mist, ruby, garnet, and amethyst, made lures with the lights of streaming stone, in the clefts of the hills of Habersham, in the beds of the valleys of Hall. But oh, not the hills of Habersham, and oh, not the valleys of Hall, avail. I am fain for to water the plain. Downward the voices of duty call, downward to toil and be mixed with the main. The dry fields burn, and the mills are to turn, and a myriad flowers mortally yearn. And the lordly main from beyond the plain Calls o'er the hills of Habersham, Calls through the valleys of Hall. End of section 61 This recording is in the public domain. Section 62 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, Selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Sea Fever by John Macefield. I must go down to the seas again, to the lonely sea and the sky. And all I ask is a tall ship and a star to steer her by. And the wheels kick and the wind's song and the white sails shaking. And a gray mist on the sea's face and a gray dawn breaking. I must go down to the seas again, for the call of the running tide is a wild call and a clear call that may not be denied. And all I ask is a windy day, with the white clouds flying, and the flung spray and the blown spume, and the seagulls crying. I must go down to the seas again, to the vagrant gypsy life, to the gull's way and the whale's way, where the wind's like a wetted knife. And all I ask is a merry yarn from a laughing fellow rover, and quiet sleep and a sweet dream when the long trick's over. End of section 62. This recording is in the public domain. Section 63 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. O Captain, My Captain by Walt Whitman In Memory of Abraham Lincoln O Captain, my Captain, our fearful trip is done. The ship has weathered every rack. The prize we sought is won. The port is near, the bells I hear, the people all exulting. While follow eyes the steady keel, the vessel grim and daring. But, O oh, heart, 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 O oh, the bleeding drops of red, Where on the deck my captain lies, fallen cold and dead. O oh, captain, my captain, rise up and hear the bells. Rise up, for you the flag is flung, for you the bugle trills, For you the bouquets and ribbon wreaths, for you the shores are crowding. For you they call the swaying mass, their eager faces turning. Here, Captain, dear father, this arm beneath your head, it is some dream that on the deck you've fallen cold and dead. My captain does not answer. His lips are pale and still. My father does not feel my arm. He has no pulse nor will. The ship is anchored safe and sound, its voyage closed and done. From fearful trip the victor ship comes on with object won. Exult, O shores, O ring, O bells, but I, with mournful tread, walk the deck my captain lies, fallen cold and dead. End of section 63. This recording is in the public domain.
Section number 64 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale, recorded for LibriVox.org by The Story Girl. The Snow by Emily Dickinson It sifts from leaden sieves. It powders all the wood. It fills with alabaster wool the wrinkles of the road. It makes an even face of mountain and of plain. Unbroken forehead from the east unto the east again. It reaches to the fence. It wraps it rail by rail till it is lost in fleeces. It flings a crystal veil on stump and stack and stem. The summer's empty room. Acres of seams where harvests were, recordless but for them. It ruffles wrists of posts as ankles of a queen then stills its artisans like ghosts, denying they have been. End of section 64. This recording is in the public domain. Section 65 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, Selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Rosehip. A Song for My Mother, Her Hands. By Anna Hempstead Branch. My mother's hands are cool and fair. They can do anything. Delicate mercies hide them there like flowers in the spring. When I was small and could not sleep, she used to come to me, and with my cheek upon her hand, how sure my rest would be. For everything she ever touched, of beautiful or fine, their memories living in her hands would warm that sleep of mine. Her hands remember how they played one time in meadow streams, and all the flickering song and shade of water took my dreams. Swift through her haunted fingers pass memories of garden things. I dipped my face in flowers and grass and sounds of hidden wings. One time she touched the cloud that kissed brown pastures bleak and far. I leaned my cheek into a mist and thought I was a star. All this was very long ago, and I am grown, but yet the hand that lured my slumber so I never can forget. For still, when drowsiness comes on, it seems so soft and cool, shaped happily beneath my cheek, hollow and beautiful. End of section 65. This recording is in the public domain. Section 66 of Rainbow Gold, Poems All and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale, recorded for LibriVox.org by Effia Tura. The Fountain by James Russell Lowell Into the Sunshine full of the light, leaping and flashing from morn till night, into the moonlight, whiter than snow, waving so flower-like when the winds blow, into the starlight, rushing in spray, happy at midnight, happy by day, ever in motion, blithesome and cheery, still climbing heavenward, never a weary, glad of all weathers, still seeming best, upward or downward, Motion thy rest, full of a nature nothing can tame, changed every moment, 
ever the same. Ceaseless aspiring, ceaseless content, darkness or sunshine, thy element. Glorious fountain, let my heart be, fresh, changeful, constant, upward like a V. End of section 66. This recording is in the public domain. Section 67 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New Selected by Sarah Teasdale Recorded for LibriVox.org by Efia Tura Nature's Friend by William H. Davies Say what you like, all things love me. I pick no flowers, that wins the bee. The summer's moths think my hand one to touch their wings with wind and sun. The garden mouse comes near to play, indeed he turns his eyes away. The wren knows well I rob no nest, when I look in she still will rest. The hedge stops cows or they would come, after my voice right to my home. The horse can tell straight from my lip, my hand could not hold any whip. Say what you like, all things love me. Horse, cow and mouse, bird, moth and bee. End of section 67. This recording is in the public domain. Section 68 of Rainbow Gold. Poems old and new. Selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Betty B. Tree Toad Tree Toad is a small gray person with a silver voice. Tree Toad is a leaf gray shadow that sings. Tree Toad is never seen unless a star squeezes through the leaves or a moth looks sharply at a gray branch. How would it be, I wonder, to sing patiently all night, never thinking that people are asleep? Raindrops and mist, starriness over the trees, the moon, the dew, the other little singers, cricket, toad, leaf rustling, they would listen. It would be music like weather that gets into all the corners of out of doors. Every night I see little shadows I never saw before. Every night I hear little voices I never heard before. When night comes trailing her starry cloak, I start out for slumberland with tree toads calling along the roadside. Good night, I say to one. Good bye, I say to another. I hope to find you on the way we have traveled before. I hope to hear you singing on the road of dreams. Hilda Conkling, six years old. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Section 69 of Rainbow Gold Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale, recorded for LibriVox.org by Rosehip. An Ancient Christmas Carol, Author Unknown He came all so still where his mother was, as dew in April that falleth on the grass. He came all so still where his mother lay, as dew in April that falleth on the spray. He came all so still to his mother's bower, as dew in April that falleth on the flower. Mother and maiden was never none but she, well might such a lady God's mother be. End of section 69 this recording is in the public domain. Section 70 of Rainbow Gold Poems Old and New Selected by Sarah Teasdale Recorded for LibriVox.org by Betty B. An Old Christmas Carol As Joseph was a walkin, he heard an angel sing, This night shall be the birth night of Christ our heavenly King. His birthbed shall be neither in house nor in hall, nor in the place of paradise, but in the oxen stall. 
he neither shall be rocked in silver nor in gold but in the wooden manger that lieth in the mould he neither shall be washen with white wine nor with red but with the fair spring water that on you shall be shed he neither shall be clothed in purple nor in pall but in the fair white linen that usen babies all as joseph was a walkin thus did the angels sing and mary's son at midnight was born to be our king then be you glad good people at this time of the year and light you up your candles for his star it shineth clear author unknown end of section seventy this recording is in the public domain section seventy one of rainbow gold poems old and new selected by sarah teasdale recorded for librivox dot org by betty b king john and the abbot of canterbury an ancient story i'll tell you anon of a notable prince that was called king john and he ruled england with main and with might for he did great wrong and maintained little right and i'll tell you a story a story so merry concerning the abbot of canterbury how for his housekeeping and high renown they rode post for him to fair london town and hundred men the king did hear say the abbot kept in his house every day and fifty gold chains without any doubt in velvet coats waited the abbot about how now father abbot i hear it of thee thou keepest a far better house than me and for thy housekeeping and high renown i fear thou workest treason against my own crown my liege quoth the abbot i would it were known i never spend nothing but what is my own and i trust your grace will do me no dear for spending of my own true-gotten gear yes yes father abbot thy fault it is high and now for the same thou needest must die for except thou canst answer me questions three thy head shall be smitten from thy body and first quoth the king when i'm in this stead with my crown of gold so fair on my head among all my liege men so noble of birth thou must tell me to one penny what i am worth secondly tell me without any doubt how soon i may ride the whole world about and at the third question thou must not shrink but tell me here truly what i do think oh these are hard questions for my shallow wit nor i cannot answer your grace as yet but if you will give me but three weeks space i'll do my endeavour to answer your grace now three weeks space to thee will i give and that is the longest time thou hast to live for if thou dost not answer my questions three thy lands and thy livings are forfeit to me away rode the abbot all sad at that word and he rode to cambridge and oxenford but never a doctor there was so wise that could with his learning an answer devise then home rode the abbot of comfort so cold and he met his shepherd a-going to fold how now my lord abbot you are welcome home what news do you bring us from good king john sad news sad news shepherd i must give that i have but three days more to live for if i do not answer him questions three my head will be smitten from my body the first is to tell him there in that stead with his crown of gold so fair on his head among all his liege men so noble of birth to within one penny of what he is worth the second to tell him without any doubt how soon he may ride this whole world about and at the third question i must not shrink but tell him there truly what he does think now cheer up sire abbot did you never hear yet that a fool he may learn a wise man wit lend me horse and serving men and your apparel and i'll ride to london to answer your quarrel nay frown not if it hath been told unto me i am like your lordship as ever may be and if you will but lend me your gown there is none shall know us at fair london town now horses and serving men thou shalt have with sumptuous array most gallant and brave with crozier and mitre and rochet and cope fit to appear for our father the pope now welcome sire abbot the king he did say 
tis well thou art come back to keep thy day for and if thou canst answer my questions three thy life and thy living both saved shall be and first when thou seest me here in this stead with my crown of gold so fair on my head among all my liege men so noble of birth tell me to one penny what i am worth for thirty pence our saviour was sold among the false jews as i have been told and twenty-nine is the worth of thee for i think thou art one penny worser than he the king he laughed and swore by saint bittel i did not think i had been worth so little now secondly tell me without any doubt how soon i may ride this whole world about you must rise with the sun and ride with the same until the next morning he riseth again and then your grace need not make any doubt but in twenty-four hours you'll ride it about the king he laughed and swore by st joan i did not think it could be done so soon now from the third question thou must not shrink but tell me here truly what i do think yea that shall i do and make your grace merry you think i'm the abbot of canterbury but i'm his poor shepherd as plain you may see that am come to beg pardon for him and for me the king he laughed and swore by the mass i'll make thee lord abbot this day in this place now may my liege be not in such speed for a lack i can neither write nor read four nobles a week then i will give thee for this merry jest thou hast shown unto me and tell the old abbot when thou comest home thou hast brought him a pardon from good king john author unknown End of section 71. This recording is in the public domain. Section 72 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale, recorded for LibriVox.org by Rosehip. The Sands of D by Charles Kingsley. O oh Mary, go and call the cattle home, and call the cattle home, and call the cattle home across the sands of Dee. The western wind was wild and dank with foam, and all alone went she. The western tide crept up along the sand, and o'er and o'er the sand, and round and round the sand, as far as I could see. The rolling mist came down and hid the land, And never home came she. Oh, is it weed or fish or floating hair, A tress of golden hair, A drowned maiden's hair above the nets at sea? Was never salmon yet that shone so fair Among the stakes on Dee? They rowed her in across the rolling foam, the cruel crawling foam, the cruel hungry foam, to her grave beside the sea. But still the boatmen hear her call the cattle home across the sands of Dee. End of section 72. This recording is in the public domain. Section 73 of Rainbow Gold Poems Old and New Selected by Sarah Teasdale Recorded for LibriVox.org Sister Awake Old English Song, Author Unknown Sister Awake, close not your eyes. The day her light discloses, And the bright morning doth arise Out of her bed of roses. See the clear sun, the world's bright eye, in at our window peeping. Lo, how he blusheth to espy us idle wenches sleeping. Therefore, awake, make haste, I say, and let us without staying, all in our gowns of green so gay, into the park a maying. End of section 73. This recording is in the public domain. Section 74 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, 
Selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Skeleton in Armor by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Speak, speak, thou fearful guest, who with thy hollow breast, still in rude armor dressed, comest to daunt me, wrapped not in eastern balms, but with thy fleshless palms stretched as if asking alms why dost thou haunt me then from those cavernous eyes pale flashes seem to rise as when the northern skies gleam in december and like the water's flow under december's snow came a dull voice of woe from the hearth's chamber i was a viking old my deeds though manifold no skald in song has told no saga taught thee take heed that in thy verse thou dost the tale rehearse else dread a dead man's curse for this i sought thee far in the northern land by the wild baltic strand i with my childish hand tamed the gerfalcon and with my skates fast bound skimmed the half-frozen sound that the poor whimpering hound trembled to walk on off to his frozen lair tracked i the grisly bear while from my path the hare fled like a shadow off through the forest dark followed the werewolf's bark until the soaring lark sang from the meadow but when i older grew joining a corsair's crew over the dark sea i flew with the marauders wild was the life we led many the souls that sped many the hearts that bled by our stern orders many a wassail bout wore the long winter out often our midnight shout set the cocks crowing as we the berserk's tail measured in cups of ale draining the oaken pail filled to overflowing once as i told in glee tales of the stormy sea soft eyes did gaze on me burning yet tender and as the white stars shine on the dark norway pine on that dark heart of mine fell their soft splendor i wooed the blue-eyed maid yielding yet half afraid and in the forest shade our vows were plighted under its loosened vest fluttered her little breast like birds within their nest by the hawk frightened bright in her father's hall shields gleamed upon the wall loud sang the minstrels all chanting his glory when of old hildebrand i asked his daughter's hand mute did the minstrel stand to hear my story while the brown ale he quaffed loud then the champion laughed and as the wind gusts waft the sea foam brightly so the loud laugh of scorn out of those lips unshorn from the deep drinking horn blew the foam lightly she was a prince's child i but the viking wild and though she blushed and smiled i was discarded should not the dove so white follow the sea mew's flight why did they leave that night her nest unguarded scarce had i put to sea bearing the maid with me fairest of all was she among the norsemen when on the white sea strand waving his armed hand saw we old hildebrand with twenty horsemen then launched they to the blast bent like a reed each mast yet we were gaining fast when the wind failed us and with a sudden flaw came round the gusty scaw so that our foe we saw laugh as he hailed us and as to catch the gale round veered the flapping sail death was the helmsman's hail death without quarter midships with iron keel struck we her ribs of steel down her black hulk did reel through the black water as with his wings aslant sails the fierce cormorant seeking some rocky haunt with his prey laden so toward the open main beating to sea again through the wild hurricane bore i the maiden three weeks we westward bore and when the storm was o'er cloud-like we saw the shore stretching to leeward there for my lady's bower built i the lofty tower 
which to this very hour stands looking seaward. There lived we many years, time dried the maiden's tears, she had forgot her fears, she was a mother, death closed her mild blue eyes, under that tower she lies, never shall the sun arise on such another. Still grew my bosom then, still as a stagnant fan, hateful to me were men, the sunlight hateful, in the vast forest here, clad in my warlike gear, fell I upon my spear. Oh, death was grateful. Thus seemed with many scars, bursting these prison bars, up to its native stars my soul ascended. There from the flowing bowl deep drinks the warrior's soul, skull to the northland, skull. Thus the tale ended. End of section 74. This recording is in the public domain. Section 75 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Rosehip. By Bendemeer's Stream, by Thomas Moore. There's a bower of roses by Bendemeer's stream, and the nightingale sings round it all the day long. In the time of my childhood, t'was like a sweet dream to sit in the roses and hear the bird's song. That bower and its music I never forget, but oft when alone, in the bloom of the year, I think, is the nightingale singing there yet? Are the roses still bright by the calm Bendemere? No, the roses soon withered that hung o'er the wave, but some blossoms were gathered while freshly they shone, and a dew was distilled from their flowers that gave all the fragrance of summer when summer was gone. Thus memory draws from delight ere it dies, an essence that breathes of it many a year. Thus bright to my soul, as t'was then to my eyes, is that bower on the banks of the calm Bendemere. End of section 75. This recording is in the public domain. Section 76 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, selected by Sarah Teasdale. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. A Prayer by Edwin Markham. Teach me, Father, how to go softly as the grasses grow. Hush my soul to meet the shock of the wild world as a rock. But my spirit, propped with power, make as simple as a flower. Let the dry heart fill its cup like a poppy looking up. Let life lightly wear her crown like a poppy looking down. Teach me, Father, how to be kind and patient as a tree. Joyfully the crickets croon under the shady oak at noon. Beetle, on his mission bent, tarries in that cooling tent. Let me also cheer a spot, hidden field or garden grot. Place where passing souls can rest, on the way, and be their best. End of section 76 This recording is in the public domain. Section 77 of Rainbow Gold, Poems Old and New, Selected by Sarah Teasdale, Recorded for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Young Lochinvar by Sir Walter Scott O oh, young Lochinvar is come out of the west, Through all the wide border his steed was the best, And save his good broadsword he weapons had none, he rode all unarmed, and he rode all alone. So faithful in love, and so dauntless in war, There never was knight like the young Lochinvar. He stayed not for break, and he stopped not for stone. He swam the Eska River, 
where ford there was none but ere he alighted at netherby gate the bride had consented the gallant came late for a laggard in love and a dastard in war was to wed the fair ellen of brave lochinvar so boldly he entered the netherby hall among bridesmen and kinsmen and brothers and all then spoke the bride's father his hand on his sword for the poor craven bridegroom said never a word oh come ye in peace here or come ye in war what a dance at our bridal young lord lochinvar i long wooed your daughter my suit you denied love swells like the solway but ebbs like its tide and now i am come with this lost love of mine to lead but one measure drink one cup of wine there are maidens in scotland more lovely by far that would gladly be bride to the young lochinvar the bride kissed the goblet the knight took it up he quaffed off the wine and he threw down the cup she looked down to blush and she looked up to sigh with a smile on her lips and a tear in her eye he took her soft hand ere her mother could bar now tread we a measure said young lochinvar so stately his form and so lovely her face that never a hall such a galliard did grace while her mother did fret and her father did fume and the bridegroom stood dangling his bonnet and plume and the bride maidens whispered twere better by far to have matched our fair cousin with young lochinvar one touch to her hand and one word in her ear when they reached the hall door and their chargers stood near so light to the croup the fair lady he swung so light to the saddle before her he sprung she is one we are gone over bank bush and scar they'll have fleet steeds that follow quoth young lochinvar there was mounting mong grames of the netherby clan forsters fenwicks and musgraves they rode and they ran there was racing and chasing on canoby lee but the lost bride of netherby ne'er did they see so daring in love and so dauntless in war have ye e'er heard of gallant like young lochinvar end of section seventy seven this recording is in the public domain section seventy eight of rainbow gold poems old and new selected by sarah teasdale recorded for librivox dot org by betty b off the ground three jolly farmers once bet a pound each dance the others would off the ground out of their coats they slipped right soon and neat and nicem put each his shoon one two three and away they go not too fast and not too slow out from the elm tree's noonday shadow into the sun and across the meadow past the schoolroom with knees well bent fingers a flicking they dancing went upsides and over and round and round they cross click clacking the parish bound by tupman's meadow they did their mile tea to tum on a three-barred stile then straight through whipham downhill to weak footing it lightsome but not too quick up fields to watch it and on through y till seven fine churches they'd seen skip by seven fine churches and five old mills farms in the valley and sheep on the hills old man's acre and dead man's pool all left behind as they danced through wool and wool gone by like tops that seem to spin and sleep they danced in dream with the well over wassop woe like an old clock their heels did go a league and a league and a league they went and not one weary and not one spent and lo and behold past willow come lee stretched with its waters the great green sea says farmer bates i puffs and i blows what's under the water why no man knows says farmer giles my wind comes weak and a good man drownded is far to seek but farmer turvey on twirling toes ups with his gaiters and in he goes 
down where the mermaids pluck and play on their twangling harps in a sea-green day down where the mermaids finned and fair sleek with their combs their yellow hair bates and giles on the shingle sat gazing at turvey's floating hat but never a ripple nor bubble told where he was supping off plates of gold never an echo rilled through the sea of the feasting and dancing and minstrelsy they called 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 came no reply naught but the ripple's sandy sigh then glum and silent they sat instead vacantly brooding on home and bed till both together stood up and said us knows not dreams not where you be turvy and less in the deep blue sea but excusing silver and it comes most willing here's us to paying our forty shilling for it's certain sure turvy safe and sound you dance to square turvy off the ground walter de la mare end of poem this recording is in the public domain section seventy nine of rainbow gold poems old and new selected by sarah teasdale recorded for librivox dot org by sonia old daddy darkness by james ferguson old daddy darkness creeps through his hole black as a blackamoor blind as a mole stir the fire till it lows let the barony sit old daddy darkness is no wanted yet see him in the corners hiding fra de licht see him at the window glooming at the nicht turn up the gaslicht close the shutters all and old daddy darkness will flee far awa awa to hide the birdie within its cosy nest awa to lap the wee floors on their mither's breast awa to loosen gaffer toil fra his daily car for old daddy darkness is kindly to all he comes when we're weary to weans fra o wares he comes when the bairnies are getting off their clays to cover them so cosy and bring bonny dreams so old daddy darkness is better than he seems steek ye in my wee tot ye'll see daddy then he's in below the bed clouds to cuddle ye he's fain no nestle to his bosy sleep and dream ye fill till wee davy daylight comes keekin over the hill end of section seventy nine this recording is in the public domain end of rainbow gold poems old and new selected for boys and girls by sarah teasdale